What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, everybody? This your boy, Doc Holiday. We back with another HBC Overdrive Live show. If you haven't done it by now, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the stream. Make sure you comment on it and share it with everybody, man. So we are at, <laughs> first of all, we at a thousand subscribers. And let me bring in my my co-host for tonight. How you doing this evening? Or can you hear me? But um the first thing first, um I want to say that we are at uh a thousand subscribers. Uh got that earlier today. Uh I want to thank everybody that actually uh, subscribe to the channel that that actually views the channel that actually watch the videos and uh to help to get the content out to basically raise awareness for uh all hbcus uh not just one but all hbcus out there and i just want to put it out there like hey it's it's a good it's a good day today um my my co-host tonight is uh she loves d i want y'all to go subscribe to her park uh her her channel um she got a podcast that's coming up um coming up soon and it's coming down the pipeline so we're gonna let's go ahead and um make sure we get that you know make sure we get that uh going for her right there But yeah, but anyway, um, I know a lot of people have been um wondering what's going on as far as um um what's been going on as far as what uh that you saw earlier today, um, and if you don't know what happened today, um, it's uh Ed Reed. Named head coach at Bethune Cookman. Um, I just want to say, uh, first of all, congratulations to Ari. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I got you. All right. <laughs> you good. You good now. You good. So yeah, we uh for all the moderators, make sure we moderate the channel. Uh, we gonna stay on topic tonight because I don't want to get uh, sidetracked and sideline from from other things that's going on. But uh, like I said, first of all, first of all, I just want to say thank y'all for again, thank y'all for you know getting the channel to a thousand subscribers. I I kind of say I wanted to do it before uh, by New Year's and. To my boy Ken Clark, he said, "Bump that, we gonna do it right now." <laughs> so, and that's the kind of thing we need to do is like as a collective, kind of like almost crowd surfing. <laughs> but um, like I said, man, Ed Reed is named the head coach of Bethune Cookman. Don't know about the um. Financial terms right now, they haven't disclosed that, but we know we all know that we can actually go and view that because it's public record. Um, but yeah, uh, so this was uh verified by uh Bruce Feld, Bruce Feldman first, and then um, I think it was Brett McMurphy on Twitter. So I've seen this on Twitter, and as soon as I've seen it, I think i seen like every other podcaster just jump on it and, and and they ran with it earlier i was at work at the time when i seen this so i had enough time to get my thoughts together to get all my little slides and stuff like that together so i was like okay yeah um 
I just want to make sure everything was, you know what I'm saying? Everything was everything. And we not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not half stepping with this. So um the the first thing, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is is how does this hire affect Bethune Cookman? So what do you think as far as how does this affect Bethune Cookman um with this hire right here? Um so this is a great hire. It's shocking mm-hmm. um, to see another Hall of Famer take that step and decide to coach at an HBCU. I love it for Bethune Cookman. Um, they've had a rough couple of years transitioning into the SWAC. They haven't been doing so well. Um, and I think Deion Sanders shook up our coaching field in the sense that uh, all of the SWAC schools were looking for that coach to bring them to the next level to be able to compete with um, Deion Sanders and his recruitment. Um, so this definitely broke the internet today. And for Bethune, it's I'm sure that it's something that's going to definitely um, – put fire to the fan base and get them involved in social media, um, hail wildcats, pray together. Like it's Mm. something that they can really build on. Okay. Say who, what's going on, Cliff, man? Uh, What's the deal? What what you think about this? uh, How does this affect Bethune Cookman? Man, I, I just think it brings instant credibility to the program. It's the biggest thing. Um, and, and like I just said in the chat, if this is the new era where guys are just kind of finally recognizing, I mean, again, you, you can, I mean, obviously, you know, Coach Prime has started this, this movement off, but if you got guys like Hugh Jackson, Eddie George, and now Ed Reed coming back, or even like Eddie Robinson Jr., mm-hmm. uh, TC, like this is what it's supposed to be. You're pouring back into, you know, uh, your community, having the, you know, the credibility, the knowledge, the experience. When as, you know, maybe, you know, two, three years ago, it just wasn't, I don't want to use the term a good look, but it just wasn't, you didn't really think of it that way. And now this is this new era, like, you got a guy who's, who's done at the highest level, you know, is revered, you know, at his position being one of the best. Like, what else do you want? Like, you know, so it's just, to me, now we'll see if he has the charisma to, you know, run a program and, and recruit. But, I mean, that's okay. I mean, we, we see guys get jobs all the time. But we don't know their backgrounds like that. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I just think it's an awesome era. If this is going to be the new normal, this is awesome, man. I feel you. I was about to see Mr. Ford was coming in on the channel. I think he's re- trying to get his – uh. His phone, um, trying to get his line uh, connected, but until then, um, until he comes up here, uh, so yeah, man. My whole thing about it is, it's a breath of fresh air. It 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 takes that uh, kind of takes that dark cloud off of Bethune because of them not knowing who their head coach was going to be. Everybody knew that uh, Coach Terry Sims was actually. I mean, he did actually take over a program that was successful at you know at one point in time, but they fell on hard times. I got Mr. Ford in here, um, but also um, I think it was time for you know like like I said, it was time for some fresh blood to come into the program. Um, the only part about it is I, I'm thinking about um, with with him is that it's you know. With the cachet, do he? I don't know if he got the. You know, Ed Reed to me is more of a laid back type dude. If y'all ever see him, mm-hmm. y'all ever talk to him as far as in interviews goes, you know, he's more laid back to me. But I know on the field, that laid back, he turned that switch on and and, and it's go time. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, Mr. Ford, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. So what do you think about this hire for a Bethune? How you affect Bethune Cookman? Man, I, this is awesome, man. Uh, you know me. I'm I'm a coaching staff person. I know he's going to get the players because he's a legend down in South Florida, man. 
what you're going to see is all them kids that don't make it at Florida Atlantic, don't make it at University of Miami, don't make it at Florida International. Those schools down in South Florida are now going to be headed to Daytona. My biggest thing is, because he's a defensive person, mm-hmm. if he gets the right offensive line and the right offensive coordinator, yeah, maybe it's getting ready to be – listen, that during uh, – Florida Classic, it possibly could overtake the Bayou and that darn um, Magic City. Because let me tell you something, what this thing is going to turn into in Florida, it's going to be North Florida against South Florida. And oh, yeah. listen, the main thing is not the boys, because he's going to get the boys. Because all them people that went to um, – see, y'all, one thing I learned when I was down in Miami at one time, that football team was like a fraternity. It wasn't like just a football team. Right. They really stick together. Now, the key thing is, who is he going to get for his offensive coordinator and who is he going to get for his offensive line coach? Because if he gets the right people, baby, Bethune is back. Mm-hmm. Bethune and, I, is back. and I think with him being at University of Miami, being yeah. in charge of chief of staff of, of the football program there, yeah. uh, he learned from, from a lot of people, especially yeah. then also – him taking an assistant coach's job in the NFL. I think he took it with Houston at one and Buffalo. point. He, with the, he was a defensive backfield coach with the Buffalo Bills. So, yeah, so he he basically learned from, from a lot of people about how to be an actual head coach. And are we – the the thing is, are he, is he going to be that CEO head type head coach where he leads it upon his assistants – or is he going to be the head coach that's pretty much got to have his hand on almost everything, you know? Defensively, uh, he will. But whoever is his offense coordinator, he's basically going to give him the green light to do whatever. He's he's uh like Dooley is our offense. He's going to be all defense and special team. Okay. But whoever he picks for his offense coordinator, they will be able to do whatever they want to do. That's why it's important that we know who is it's still about coaching. Because I keep telling people, you know, I say this every night, uh, Doc. Yeah. The SWAC has NFL potential all over the SWAC. What we do not have is quality and championship coaches, especially coaches who can develop these kids into NFL or CFL or XFL players. That's right. our biggest problem. So the same thing with Bethune Cookman, who's going to be on his staff? Because okay. he going to get players. He going to get players. You ain't gonna, I'm telling you, all them kids that don't make it at UM, if, if uh, Florida International, Florida Atlantic, all them kids getting ready to come to Daytona. Hmm. Yeah. So hey. It's also like important to um, realize that Ed Reed has, not only does he have NFL co- connections, but he has right. – University of Miami connections. Yes. Yeah. He has connections to the same circles that Deion Sanders runs in. So you don't necessarily have to be Deion was the type of person that stood in front of HBCU culture and HBCU football. Right. And said, look at what I'm bringing to the table. Whereas it having a laid back coach, it could be a good thing because yeah he can still still, um provide some of those benefits as far as having a pipeline to the nfl yeah um utilize his connects to yeah to pay for things and get sponsored just like Deion sanders did and he doesn't have to be all in the camera it doesn't have to be right the ed reed show it's right. less arrogance. But here's the thing that I want y'all to always remember. He was a favorite of Ozzie Newsom. You know who Ozzie Newsom is, right? Yeah, used to be the GM of the Baltimore. Listen, or... I'm telling you, you're going to see Ozzie Newsom down in Daytona. Then you're going to mm-hmm. see – now, I'm not saying that Ray, on ne- Ray Lewis is necessarily going to be on the staff, but he and Ray Lewis were very close, so that means that Ray Lewis is going to use his influence to help him. Like I told you. And but it's only one question with this Ed Reed high, and mm-hmm. that is who's going to be on that coaching staff. If that coaching staff is tight, baby, let me. <laughs> Bethune is back. Hey, uh, I got to uh, get my boy uh, DJ. What's going on? Raw Truth Media. Y'all go subscribe to him also. 
Yeah, we got. What you think about it, man? We got an all star panel tonight, man. You mm -hmm. all are spinning gems, man. I see you, uh, Mr. Ford, uh, Hoop Jargon, She Loves Z, and subscribe to the channel, by the way. And uh, congratulations, before I go, congratulations on re reaching a thousand subs, brother. You Thank you, bro. Um, this is an excellent hire, and I, I mentioned. I heard you guys mention the connections of Ed Reed. Here's a name. Um, this man is a billionaire, and he's one of Miami's biggest boosters, John Ruiz. Ooh. He's also cool with the former Miami players. So Ed Reed, who has the connections with the Baltimore Ravens, and right. then the connections with John Ruiz, who's uh, he's a big shot guy, and he got the bag. Uh, yeah. if the culture staff like Col uh, Mr. Ford talked about comes together, and I think that's going to happen, mm -hmm. it's going to be a sleeping giant. Uh, yeah. Ed Reed has ties to Louisiana because he played high school football there. He grew up there. He went to Miami, dominated. He has ties to Miami. He has ties to Baltimore, the DMV area. That's yeah. three talent pools. This is going to be something to behold, and trust me, he will – get a quarterback in transfer portal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, we're going to go to the next one, man. We're going to go to the next topic right now. So, how does this affect uh, the SWAC as a conference? Because, to me, the whole, for the last, what, month, the, the talk of HBCU football has been around Jackson State football, about right. Coach Prime leaving, about uh, who's going to be the head coach about the kids going into the portal. Then TC becomes the head coach of uh, Jackson state. Um, him going, him and coach O going back into the port, uh, getting the kids back out of the portal with the recruiting. Now to me, this is going to uh, transition as far as now from Jackson state to Bethune Cookman. Cause like, like you said, uh, does this put, the swag back on a pedestal where it can actually be competitive. And I don't say to me, I don't think that Bethune would be competitive in the first year, year of his uh tenure, but I'm looking forward to them to be competitive in the conference in his second year on down, because he's, I'm, I'm sure he's going to try to get, get on the, 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 the trail as far as recruiting for February and also going into the transfer portal. So um, how does this affect the SWAC as a conference? Like, um, do you see some different, um, what we've seen with Prime, with, with, with Dion that was here? He can have or an impact. I mean, that's the benefit of having a transfer portal the benefit of having a big name, the benefit of having being right there in Florida where it's a hotbed for talent. Um, if he goes by the um, same type of recruiting pattern as Dion, which is using the transfer portal the first year to bulk up and get uh, student athletes that are already trained in some capacity, already have been um, vetted, and they're in there, then I think that he can be competitive. Um, I was, there's, if we look at the East, the past two years outside of FAMU, who did, who could Jackson State, who was beating Jackson State? Right. Now you have Nobody. FAMU with a really good recruiting class and you have um, Bethune Cookman that's right behind it. I think that he can definitely turn this program around within the first year if he utilizes that transfer portal i think uh i mean in, in reality that there's only one Deion Sanders in this world so i, I think we we should kind of curb our expectation and as we just said ed reed is more of a reserved guy he, he's not one of them all in the video dudes like 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 prime is so we, we just got to know that he's gonna bring again i'm gonna go back to a word i used to, to lead in credibility He's a guy that's going to, um, with again, those South Florida roots, it's just going to bring a, a solid another program to the swag. Right. And and the, the real question is, is the West going to catch up with the East? Because the East is, is stacking up. Goodness gracious. Because, I mean, because we all know Florida and them deserve to be in the swag championship. You know what I mean? 
So you, you got more talent over, over there on that side. And it's just going to be now, oh, also, it, it's going to be, you know, because I know Florida and m and Bethune are new into the, the conference, you know, and not necessarily uh, us long-term swag people. We don't quite fully acknowledge them all the way. But that's going to, you know, potentially, you know, with Coach Simmons and, you know, and Ed Reed, you know, going at it, you know, that, that may be an interstate rival that, like like uh, Mr. Uh, Ford pointed out, that, that's going to be a, a new big thing that, you know, is just going to change, change the dynamic of the conference because we, we know the, the, the mainstays of it. So I just think it's going to be a slow burn, man. And so I, I'm interested to see it because it, it's a good thing because, I mean, we all like FAMU coming in from, from a brand standpoint. Bethune kind of was a throw in. Now this is kind of like Bethune coming in with an actual product that's going to be sustainable for a long period of time with a guy who's, again, one of the best to ever do it his position. So I, I just, you know, I, I kind of see this being a good thing in multiple lanes. If y'all see what Mr. Campbell put in the chat, said that 200 kids are already hit up his social media with, with, with huddle tapes. That's crazy. <laughs> and then Bloom just backdoored them. It, yeah, we just they give they give like Deion Sanders, yes, he's great at recruiting and yes, people want to play for prime, but number one, it's Florida. I can't think of a better place for a student athlete to want to live than Florida. Florida's a nice place to live at. And then I mean, do you, we saw what um T C Taylor has been doing with recruitment without we don't even know who's on his staff. All we know is Coach O and T.C. Taylor, and the kids are coming. Right. Well, it's, it's, it won't be long because I heard uh, T.C. on an interview. He said that you will know the staff within a week, no no more than two weeks. But let me say this about this uh, Ed Reed thing. See, with Ed Reed coming into the SWAT, this is going to open up the city of Miami, that Dade County area. That's going to be fertile ground for us to go in and recruit, but it's also going to open up Tampa because in Miami and in that Tampa area, Ed Reed is legendary. Now, somebody just said it too about that DMV up there. He mm -hmm. is legendary in that Baltimore area. But what the Ed Reed hire is going to do for us, it's going to open up more recruiting fertile areas. Okay? That's just like in the SWAC using Dallas and Houston – now we're going to have Miami and Tampa. So y'all remember watching uh, 30 for 30, the um, uh, uh, the U part one yeah. and two? Yeah, so I remember that. they had a, a – Miami used to have where they wrote off uh, all the way up from Daytona down uh, to, like you said, to Tampa, all yeah. the way to the Everglades, anything down south, Orlando south, sub – they said they declared that the state of Miami. Yeah. I'm about I'm going to think that he's going to do the same thing. Yeah. Now he's he's not going to get the top athlete. He's going to get that troubled athlete, the athlete that might be headed to a junior college and he can uh stop that by bringing him to Daytona. He's not going to get that top kid cuz that top kid is still going to go to UCF. He's still going to go to uh, University of Miami. He's still going to go to Florida State. Still going to go to University of Florida. But see, them kids, like, like you look at a uh, University of Florida with 26 people in the portal, don't mm. think you can't get some of them kids. Because a lot of them Florida kids, they don't want to leave Florida. And if it means going to Bethune-Cookman to keep from leaving Florida, they will go to Daytona, I'm telling you. All right. What do you think about it, DJ? Agreed. Uh also, don't forget in the FCS, look at Campbell, and, and there's another school. I think it's Form Furman in one of those schools. Mm -hmm. They had nothing but three stars and was tops of the FCS rankings. So you don't really have to get a five star to have acquired time. If you have a bunch of high three stars, that's a winning formula. And then you sprinkle that in with transfer portal players with experience that actually played in games. That's the key right there. Uh, I think Ed Reed is going to acquire talent. Uh, yeah. Once the staff yeah. gets there, and like Mr. Ford always said, don't hire your friends now. And I don't <laughs> think he'll do that. <laughs> I don't think he'll do that. But as long as he does that, um, I, I think uh, it will bode well. I don't know the record they'll have, to be honest, because it is his first year. But once I see the staff, and I yeah. got 
staff and the quarterback. Right. That will tell me how yeah. good the will be. So, uh, so uh, let's look at it like this, though. You got in the East, right? Uh, so everybody pretty much is going to have a new quarterback except for FAM, right? I mean, except for FAMU and, um, and Alabama State. So everybody's going to have a, a almost a brand new quarterback. I'm thinking that at, uh, Alabama and m might stick with Xavier Langford. They might yeah. go with Quincy K- uh, Quincy Casey. Who knows? But everybody else in that Eastern Division is going to start off with a new quarterback. Jack State going to have a new quarterback. Uh, uh, Mississippi Valley is going to have a new quarterback. You got um, pretty much, like I said. Uh, Everybody else, everybody else is going to be. Everybody else is going to. Ha- uh, Bethune is going to start off with a new quarterback because right. Jalen Jones entered into the transfer portal, so he he has to find himself a new quarterback now. There maybe Jalen Jones don't. You know he hears about the hiring. Maybe he goes comes back out of the uh, the portal. And yeah, comes back it's to possible. Bethune. Yeah, it's possible he can do it's that. Possible. Then he yeah. then you have stability with that program right there with a quarterback all you got to do is just recruit around what your deficiencies are and and most of his deficiencies were on the defensive side of the ball um my whole thing is Jalen. i don't know where Jalen would go if he was in you know if he stays in the portal benedict college (laughs) (laughs) i mean that's That's a good program Yes, it is yes, a it is. It, it's a great if program. Not Benedict, maybe Albany State or Fort Valley, but it's going to be D two. Yeah, because you know that that's that will be his third time trans. No, what time transferring? He yeah. has one year left. How many years he has left? One. 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 D two. It's D two. And you know what's crazy? Jalen Jones, if he was playing any other position, man, yeah, he's, he'd be a pro prospect. That's a big boy. Yeah, and can run. We talking about four five four four. I remember me and DJ used used to like kind of before Shadu was in the picture. Man, me and DJ was doing streams talking about how good of an athlete he was and like how yeah how 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 uh, development wise he he could get there. I mean, because to be honest, we didn't watch Shadu like that, so we knew that you know Prime would put him out there, but we was like Jalen's fine. So yeah, yeah. Jalen, see Jalen's number one option if he wants to go NFL needs to either be linebacker. Or a defensive back. Now, if he wants to go offensive, he's a Cal Pitts type. He's a, a wing type, possibly a slot receiver. Mm-hmm. But uh, at those position, but the, the the number one position that'll get him in the pros would be as a outside linebacker or as a defensive back, because he's that kind of an athlete. He will go to the NFL at those positions. Yeah, Blue already said he go either D two or D three. Yeah, he if, he transfer. if he stays yeah. in that portal, he that's that's the only way he could go. Yeah. And especially a quick if you know, like you said, with Quinn Gray becoming the head coach over at Albany State, yeah, uh, he could probably develop him into an oh. actual quarterback. Yes, he can. He will do it. Does anybody know what the 2023 schedule is for Buffoon? I can't find it. Uh I don't think they have it out yet. Usually they're going to open up with a University of Miami. They will play maybe a South Carolina State. I mean, that's uh, what they had last year. They had Yeah, that's State. what they try to do. They they keep one team from the MEAC. They Carolina do one State. team in Miami. And I think they usually do I'm trying to think, do they do a Division 2 school? Um, I see Tennessee State. I do not see I don't actually see a Division 2. No, nah, they did. They did pretty pretty much FCS. They did all. Yeah. Um, well, outside of their two, their two or three games were Tennessee State, and then um, South Carolina State and the University uh-huh. of Miami. So those were that was for yeah. They always try to do Labor Day in Miami. So they Blue just that. said they. He said they, they only confirm out of- Miami at at the University of Miami. Huh. They do it the same weekend as Jackson State and FAMU. Yeah, yeah. They would play a day before. Jackson usually would play on a Sunday. They would play UM that Saturday. Yeah. Wow. So, I'm surprised that they didn't make that like. Yeah, I see it too. Whack in Miami. 
Yeah, Blue just put. He said the only confirmed out of conference game right now is, is at Memphis. So oh, Memphis State. Yep. Woo. And they just won a bowl game today too. So that's a pay, that's a money for uh, play for pay. Yeah, I mean, my whole thing is they they slash the 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 uh, budget for the athletic budget. Uh, it now you just gotta see what you can do with it. <laughs> I mean, I think that, like, like the um, other person said, there's a billionaire backing there. Um, now if that's one thing Dion did, he did give us the blueprint for how to work, do the most with the less, which mm-hmm. is yeah. utilizing that social media. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know what the fan base or the alumni is for Bethune Cookman, but they need to be on social media putting prey together and hail wildcat. Yeah, wildcat. I got a I got a Bethune Cookman guy in the chat right now. He'll tell you pretty much everything about it. Well he should call in and let us know about the fan base, you know, what this is it a rejuvenation and what can we expect from the fan base because even if you're losing, you still need to have that fan base. That's probably one of the most important things is win or lose. Now, now his, historically, the most important game for them was always Florida A&M at the Florida Classic. They would take home between five hundred to a million dollars, yep. five hundred thousand to a million dollars, and they use okay because you know they play in a high school stadium there in Daytona. It holds about nine thousand people at the most, but the, uh, they're monies to run the athletic department came from the Florida Classic. Uh, I don't know the exact chance. No, one time it was at a million. I don't know if it's gone down. But that was always the most important game for them financially, was them against Florida and m Okay. So, yeah, that, that now that is going to be real interesting because y'all already know before fam, you be, uh, before they Went on a little two game winning streak against Bethune. Bethune on fam, you for yeah, eight straight years. Nine, I think nine it was nine straight. Oh, straight. Okay, yeah, nine straight. I don't want to short nobody. I, don't, I ain't trying to short nobody off of they winning yeah. streak. But. See, that's what that's what that's what kept Terry Sims there. He would beat fam because I've always said, uh, I never was a Terry Sims fan. Uh, he won the MEAC the year after Jenkins left for Alabama State, and the MEAC program went down every year. Okay, this the firing of Terry Sims to me is a year too late. Yeah. And so uh, that's what kept him around. He had the ability to beat FAMU. Because remember, Ryan Stanley never beat Bethune Cookman. He lost, I think, three or four straight. I think it was four straight uh, Florida mm. Classics. Mm. Yeah, he never beat them. I ain't say, damn, that's. So what's their impact of recruiting at Bethune? So we already even we, we pretty much kind of went over that because uh, a lot of kids had put they put their name in that bucket <laughs> to Ed Reed said, "Hey, come get me." But it's over twenty one million people in the state of Florida. It's enough athletes down there for all the schools. Man, the whole Big Ten recruits. Uh, Florida. At one time, you had schools in the Pac-12 Pac recruiting Florida. Not to even mention the ACC, the SWAT, the Big Ten. Look at all them rosters. Big 12. The, uh, everybody goes. One of the things that everybody wants from Florida are their running backs, especially those South Florida running backs. They are mm-hmm. so durable because they come up running in heat. If I'm Bethune Cookman or I'm the SWAC office, I'm reaching out to somebody to pitch – for us to have a SWAC football documentary or a hmm. MIAC SWAC documentary. Oh my God. Having just one um, coach, you just have a documentary that basically documents each SWAC football's biggest game. So the Florida Classic, you know, um, I guess um, for Jackson State, that would be. Probably be Southern, the Boombox Classic. And oh, without, that's one of the biggest games in America. So, Six. and then Gramlin, the, well, you don't want to take two of the same. So then um, you pick Alabama State, of course, and Alabama A&M, and you 
pitch to somebody instead of just recording Coach Prime, let's show you what HBCU football is all about. All right. well, see, 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 one of the problems in the, in the uh, SWAC is they don't understand that not, they not only have the biggest FCS games, but they have some of the biggest games in America, period. When you talk about the Bayou Classic, you talk about the Magic City, the uh, Florida Classic, those are some of the biggest games in America, period, whether it's Division Two. FCS, FBS, those are some of the biggest games in the country. Now, the white media acknowledges acknowledges that, but they put it on paper and we don't read it. For mm. years, they have told you right behind Ohio State and Michigan, they always said Grambling and Southern was one of the top 10 uh, games in the country. If you're going to say the Bayou Classic is one, how can you not say that the Magic City is not one of the big? If you're going to say the Magic City is one, how can you say that the Boombox Classic is not one of the biggest games in the country? See, that's what we, and let me tell you something, and, and that's a great idea what you said. Uh, what's your, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Timona. Uh, Miss Timona, we've got to milk this guy Byron Allen. With what Byron Allen did for the SWAC this year, we got to ride that horse. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I had, you know, somebody was asking last night about ESPN Plus. I had it. It was awful. I watched the game. I think it was uh, Jackson State and Southern. Not the championship game, but the the um, uh, the Boombox Classic. Yeah. The game was going out. The, the uh, audio was bad. I mean, it was like a slap in our face. And so, I, you know, and everybody knows I say this all the time. I want us to get rid of ESPN. I want us to bank on Byron Allen. I want us to look at, and if we're going to put together the special that you're talking about, Mr. Moan, Byron Allen is the way to go from what yeah. I've seen. What you think, DJ? Yeah, I, I think we got to take chances uh, when it comes to media. ESPN, as we all seen, is uh, it's all politics, low quality, right? Uh, materials for HBCUs, lack of respect, and I bet you they didn't even give uh, the fair amount of money to HBCUs and media coverage, even though they were covering JSU and their uh, popularity when Coach Prime was coaching there. A total disrespect. So anything that we can do to use another uh, media avenue would be a, a plus. Byron Allen, whoever with power and substance. And I right. know there's brothers and sisters who got that dough to make it happen. Hmm. Well, that's Revolt TV with Diddy. Um, like you said, Byron Allen. But I think that that is probably something that should be pitched now because, like I said yesterday, we're at the pinnacle of HBCU football. And then today we have um, a Hall of Famer, Ed Reed sign. And it's just like, we are at the pinnacle and everybody is watching. All eyes are on HBCU football. And they might have negative things to say, but the same negative things that they had to say, they're glorifying Shador now at Colorado. They're saying, oh yeah, bring your luggage. You know, at first yeah. they were saying, you guys haven't played anybody. You guys haven't played an FBS team. Shador doesn't deserve a Heisman. And then he got in the transfer portal and committed to Colorado. Oh, yeah, he's Heisman talent. That's so, because he's worth money to them now. See, he's right. their slave so now. always know that. Yeah, he's their slave now. But the other right. thing, I, I, if we go back to this meeting, I just need to know why uh, the SWAC hadn't struck up a deal with Miss Kathy Hughes. That lady is one of the biggest black media giants in this country. And we should, and she, listen, that lady lived in Mississippi. She know about the swag. Why is it we not, we haven't now, it's good we got Byron Allen, but we need to also uh, cultivate a relationship with Miss Kathy Hughes. That lady carrying a lot of power. A lot of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody said they have Larry Little as a head coach, too. Bethune did. Yeah, that's years ago. Yeah, yeah, they did. That was, uh matter of fact, the guy who was his offensive coordinator, he brought a young guy had just graduated from Florida State. This was in the 80s. His name is Rick Stocksteel. Rick has now been the head coach at uh, Middle Tennessee State for many years. Yeah. He actually was at Clemson, and he, uh, he cultivated two great players for uh, Bethune-Cookman. One was named Leon Gonzalez. 
The reason you don't know his name is because he was overshadowed by one Jerry Rice. He had a quarterback named Bernard Hawk. Bernard Hawk was out of Jacksonville. Now, he did go to the CFL, but those kids were under uh, Rick Stockstill. Rick had just come out of uh, Bobby Bowden's program, and uh, Larry Little hired him as offensive coordinator. Okay. Well, I mean, so say so, DJ. So, how do you what? How would you pitch? Uh, go create some sort of sale pitch to the commissioner about the media as far as um, getting the conference back. You know, getting them up in the media deal and stuff. That's a good question, my brother. Really, um, before there's even a pitch, it has to be a collective unit. You have to um, speak with all the ads in a swag and see if what they're pitching makes sense. Cause you don't want to go anywhere. If anybody is listening to this done business, you don't want to go speak to a higher power and you ain't got your ducks in a row. Cause when they listen, they're going to be like, well, what are you talking about? So make sure the you got to come with the numbers. Exactly. Like, look, we, we did 2.4 million views uh-huh. after celebration bowl. We did 1.5 million views at the SWAC championship. We have over 50,000 at this game. We have over 67,000 down in Alabama. And the numbers are there. You just have to put them together. Right. And then they might ask you the question about Dion, and that's when you have to show that historical data that it's always been this way. It has nothing to do with Dion Sanders. Hey, can I say this to this Jen? Jen J, you need yeah, to go and read William Roden's book called 40 million, uh, 40 million Dollar Slave. It's obvious you don't know you haven't read that book. Before you make this statement right here, go read the book and you'll see where I got that from. Okay. I'll make sure I read that. So hey, you remember uh last week we was talking, oh, I'm about, talking, I'm talking about this person, G and J. He G&J. said it's rude to call should do a slave, Mr. Boy. You are rude. Listen, man. You must not know your history. We've gone from picking them people's cotton to running up and down these football fields and, and uh, uh, sinking baskets on the basketball court, all that stuff, slavery, right? You Listen, that little bit of money, we got always remember about the power structure. If they give you a million, they making a trillion. Understand that. Hmm. Let's see. Blue just put something out. He said, Swag Championship game was only at 391K this season. Celebration Bowl should be the cornerstone. Any media discussions for the Swag Me Act? Yeah. But I understand the reason why that 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 300, that 391K came about because, first of all, we all knew that, you know, people found out that Coach Prime was leaving to go to Colorado. Then, two, it was we were playing Southern again. And Southern backdoor themselves into into the SWAT championship game. We was thinking about playing somebody different, like Prairie View or like Texas Southern. So ask give us somebody different. FCS, um, ask Blue what the FCS ratings were for uh, the championship, or not what? even just the championship for the for, for the celebration the, bowl. No, just FCS. What was okay. their ratings? For um, like North Dakota State or. Ah, I feel you. I see what you're saying. So, but remember, Mister uh, Mister uh, Ford, we was talking uh-huh. about uh, the. Can we get back to the uh, that renaissance for HBCU football and sports? We're getting there. We, we're getting there. Listen, from 1985 until the year 2000, it was a golden era at Florida and m under the leadership of Frederick Humphreys, Doctor Frederick Humphreys. Ever since twenty, what what year? When did we have that that spring season? What year? What's what year was it? Twenty twenty. Listen, that that was the beginning of a golden era for black college football. We are we're getting there now. What we got to do is you and I think you are one of your uh, panelists just mentioned. We got to get tight over there on that west. The east, like you said, the east is blowing up. The, the, the East is dominant. They got good coaches, good players. We now the the West has the players, but the coaching is mediocre. We got to get the coaching up on that West side. That's the only thing we got to do. Got to get that coaching up on that West side. 
And yeah, like I you think... said, Southern basically backdoor it back in. I mean, and then they 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 you know the the, the sad part about the SWAC championship was. The Bubba McDaniel saga. I don't care what nobody say. I know a lot of people say the sad part was that deal that uh, Coach Prime was leaving. For me, it was Bubba McDaniel. How could this boy produce almost 400 yards of offense and he doesn't sit on the bench 10 games? That was horrible. I see. Okay. Uh, all FCS playoff games this season has been higher than the SWAT championship. All were on ESPN2. North Dakota State game was over a million this past weekend. But no, did North Dakota out draw the celebration bowl? No, they did not. <laughs> no, they did not. Nah. Yeah, the uh but like you said, with the West, it do need to improve. You know, yeah, like you said, you can't you can't have you can't like I said, you can't have Southern back door. If if Southern's gonna be dominant in the West, they gotta start off dominant regardless. And I'm and I mean by not playing high school teams like uh, Florida Memorial, yeah, and and um, uh, Virginia Lynch. Did they did they play yeah. Virginia Lynchburg? I know they played Florida Memorial. Yeah, like and put eighty six points on them. I think. Yeah, so you know, to me, you got to have some sort of sustenance. You got to put some schedule out there where you playing somebody that's tough. I need. We need to know. We need to know if you can get yourselves back in there like a Pete Richardson type team. Listen, I would, baby. I would <laughs> listen. Do you know what that would do for us if we could if if Southern would go back to the Pete Richardson era? Because I'm gonna say this again. Southern University had the second best personnel in the SWAC after Jackson State, but they were underachieving and they were undercoached. And so I'm hoping that next year. We don't have to deal with that no more. <laughs> I need for that to be corrected. Because let me tell you something. If you go back and look at Southern's defense from last year, Southern could have played 20 to 25 players on that defense, and that would have been no drop-off. You had Jason Dumas. Then you had a Buck Buchanan Award winner. What's that boy's name? Jordan. What was his name? Jordan, Jordan Lewis. Lewis. You had Jordan Lewis on the same defense, and you weren't dominant? And don't That's coaching. Money. <laughs> Trey Lane. Trey Lane. Yeah, Chris, that's what I'm saying. Listen, Cam Peterson. There you go. <laughs> they were dumb. I mean, look at the personnel and then look at the coaching. It didn't match. It didn't match. I got another new, new person up here. Uh, Musa, introduce yourself, man. Hey, Hello? Can you hear me? I think he, I don't know what's up, but uh, as far as me, when it now when it comes down to it, uh, in the East, everybody's been saying that everybody's saying that Florida and them was going to try to take is going to try to take the East. Yeah, uh, depending on how their schedule is, what their first game of the season, which would be the OBC. Yeah, that's right. Jackson and Miami, third straight I, year. I don't, I don't see them taking the East again. Even though, yes, even though they have Spence, I'm telling you, I don't see them taking the East. Well, let me tell you <laughs> something, Doc. What you're doing, you're getting ready. If they don't take the East, you're putting Willie on the hot seat. I'm just gonna tell you now. The honeymoon is over down there in Tallahassee. He got to, listen. Dion is gone. Willie got to take the swag. If you don't take the swag, that his seat gonna get hot. How right. nine and two? Not like I would if I was. You got to keep him on there. Because he, he's right. You're right. There. You're right. Because one thing about right it, right there, and there's no <laughs> other on the west and on the east outside of Jackson State. Nobody else is competing with FAMU. So to you're right. Well, let, let me say this, and you're absolutely correct. Let me tell you something. After 2003, Florida and M forced uh, Billy Joe to resign. From 2004 until I think he, the, Mr. Uh, Campbell, when did uh, Willie Simmons show up? 2016 or 2017? It, does anybody know when did he show up? I think it was his 2006. 
17 because yeah, dude okay. was at PV. Yeah, dude okay, was at so, PV now. Listen, from 2004 until 2016 or 2017, there was nothing but chaos and confusion in Tallahassee with that football pro program. But they got rid of Billy Joe. They brought in Reuben Carter, who was awful. Then after Reuben Carter, they brought in Joe Taylor. Everybody was so happy. He had one of the worst uh, coaching staff you could put together. He had the worst offense coordinator I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then they get rid of uh, Joe Taylor and they bring in somebody worse than him. That was the linebacker. Uh, his name was Holmes. Earl, Earl Holmes. Holmes. Yeah, that, that was a, what it was. It was a power move by the locals there in Tallahassee. He definitely wasn't ready for no head coaching job. So they get rid of him. Kesslin Winslow fires him a game before homecoming. And uh, they bring in a guy who was friends with Dion. He was at East Gatson High School. I can't think his name right now. He was Corey a Fuller. State. That's right, Fuller. Mm -hmm. Okay, then they bring in Fuller. And then they get rid of Fuller. And then the new day, I mean, the good day come back with Willie Simmons comes over from Prairie View. But I'm just telling y'all, the fam you faithful are not a patient group of people. So like, ooh, I know they that. Are not that would be a disservice to for. I'm not saying they're come. gonna fire him, but if right. we, if he does not take the swag this year, it's gonna breed a lot of contempt. It's well, gonna be a lot of animosity down there in Tallahassee. I'm just telling you now. I'm surprised he, that Campbell, like you know, Campbell's head coach. Yeah, uh, he's Mike. Had, uh, he's been there for Mike Mentor. He's been there Mike for Mentor, like yeah. ten years. Every yeah. losing year, losing year, losing year, just terrible, just terrible. I don't know. They must love him. Well, I got, I got. Or maybe it's the recruiting that he's got the well, last two years. Oh, Mike Mentor. Don't yeah, forget they had a scholarship problem. They didn't even have scholarship kids for a while. They had to uh, build their program off walk-ons. Okay, yeah. so basically, he built it from the ground up. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, Musa. You see how much time they gave him to build his program. And so for FAMU, that would be like starting all over the, again. And it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't I, don't, I don't think they would fire him, but I'm just telling you. Uh, I, I think I stayed. I don't know if you heard me last night. In an 80 year period, FAMU you only had 12 losing seasons. Those people in Tallahassee are not only used to winning, but they used to championships. Mm hmm. They used to champion. Go back and study their history. They are used to championship. Okay? When you talk about Florida a &M, you got to bring up the name of uh, Jake Gaither. Jake Gaither won over 200 uh, games. I doubt if he lost 50 games. Somebody look that up. I don't think he did. I doubt if Jake Gaither lost 50 games. Hold on, Mr. Ford. I'm bringing my guy, Musa. Musa, how you doing, okay. man? What's going on, my man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So what, what, what you said, first of all, what you say about this hire for Bethune Cookman and how do you feel it's going to affect everything else in the sweat? Okay. First and foremost, I got to give a shout out. I got to start off with the elders, Mr. Ford. Yes, I've, sir. Been saying, I've been saying this. My name is Musa. I'm from Philadelphia, right? I, I right. got a long story. I'm from Philadelphia, East Coast. I had a scholarship to go to, um, to school up in these D2 schools. I might have Bloomsburg. They like D2 yeah, schools. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I recruited myself into Grambling, and I went there in 2006. I had tail end. I watched. I was able to watch Bruce Eugene play, right? So myself call, coming all the way from the East Coast going to Grambling, so that lets you know how strong HBCUs are. And I watched it every year. Me and my uncle watched the body practice. But I think you should be in the Black College Hall of Fame as a historian. I think that needs to happen. Oh, um, secondly, thank you. Secondly, I got to give my man Raw Truth the Raw Truth you deservingly. I got to give you a shout out. Great. <laughs> My man, Thank I love your reporting, man. Unbiased, straight, raw. You don't ship hop. You don't D ride or whatever. You stay to the truth. My man, Overdrive, I'm new to you. I've been on you for the past two weeks, but you're on your, your uh, stuff. And she, she, I love. I know she goes hard for JSU, so I'm not even going to try her on that front. She's a diehard fan. She don't flip sides. With that being said, this is excellent. Man, I almost jumped out my seat when I seen this. To me, Ed Reed is the greatest safety to ever play the game, period. It's not even, and I'm a, I'm a Dawkins fan. I'm from Philadelphia, but I cannot put nobody over Ed Reed. His smart, <laughs> his IQ is just unparalleled. With this, this, somebody was saying this, and I was like, actually, that's true. Dion's personality fit the swag perfectly, but with Ed Reed, the reason why it's such a bigger hire is because 
this program was almost in turmoil what happened with these hurricanes and stuff so they needed a big splash this was the perfect hire i feel like and what y'all were saying about FAMU was very true jake gaither people don't know jake gaither was beating eddie robinson he right. was the prerequisite right. to eddie robinson eddie robinson wasn't winning when jake gaither was in the pitch he had to learn how to win so that just lets you know how powerful um FAMU has been historically um i think this is going to actually do better for the um the swag East and specifically FAMU because it's going to force the recruiting level to go up. I feel like a lot of recruits found out about um, Willie Simmons because of how him and Prime relationship was. That's one thing I do salute the Prime. There's some things I, I don't like how he left, but he always put his arm around people and put people on so that way they, the light would shine on them. And I feel like Willie Simmons, even though he's been a great coach, I feel like that light has been casted on him for those guys in the Florida area to be like, hold up. Let me learn about this program. Let me see what they got going on. And they got a lot of recruits right now. So I think this is only going to help. If he can get – if this is the pipe dream, but if he can get Ray Lewis as his defensive coordinator, it's game over. I don't care what nobody say. And I'm grambling to the D-I-D-I-E, but if he gets Ray Lewis on the staff, if they're able to work that out, that would just be ridiculous. And I'm going to play – yeah, go ahead. If, 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 if he do that, however he get his staff – He's gonna be playing checkers and not. He's gonna be playing chess and not checkers. My point. He's gonna that. try to play chess. Everybody else is gonna try to play checkers. You can't. You can't. You can't out recruit Ray Lewis and uh, Ed Reed. I don't care who you are. <laughs> like that's not. And Florida. I think. I think you're giving Dion a little bit too much credit. <laughs> Bam, you had their own football documentary. Why not us? Yeah. And that was put together way before Prime. It didn't have anything to do with Prime. No, no, and, I'm, not, I'm not taking away from FAMU as a historic program. I'm just saying that uh, people that love this swag, we know about the swag. But I'm, right. like I said, I'm from the East Coast. There are, unfortunately, some black people, and not just black, but there's some people that just don't know about the history here. And what That's happens it. is, no, I don't care what nobody says. A lot of times, like, you can speak up and yell, but when there's somebody with a big name, once they shed a little light, not saying that he. I think was, the, the Chris Paul, he he was the executive producer for. Yeah, that. He was, so I think Chris he Paul. Was. Yeah, was the one that really exposed it, and I would think that other people like Chris Paul need to be getting on the SWAC um, documentary because SWAC football is so great, and it doesn't take for one person to stand in front of the camera while everything's going on behind him. When in reality, everything that's going on behind him is going to be there regardless of if he's here or not. Right. That's very true. Yeah. Chris Paul's granddaddy was best friends with uh, big house games, you know, big house games at one time was the winning his college basketball coach in America. I think either Shashesky or Bobby Knight broke his record. But he knows all about black college sports, period. Oh, yeah. I think half of his family went to Winston-Salem, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah his he granddad was, was best friend. Yeah, his granddad was a barber. And his best friend was Big House Gaines. Yeah, he was the only one to go to uh, – he was the only one to go to uh, uh, Win uh, not Winston-Salem, but to Wake Forest. Yeah, I think two weeks ago he graduated from uh, Winston-Salem with a degree in communications. Yep. He also put on a tournament out in Vegas. He had uh, – uh, Hampton there, he had Norfolk State, he had Texas Southern, and he had somebody, y'all need to look it up, but he, he put on a tournament out in Vegas, maybe last week or two weeks ago. Yeah, so he, yeah, I think he uh, doing it again. Yeah. So he, he's, uh, so he's been basically, for the last couple of years, he's been entrenched in, in, in HBCU, uh, yeah. especially yeah. The culture yeah. uh -huh. and in the sports, because he knows forget, how. I think he knows how important it is, though. Yeah, yeah, and don't forget the contract that uh, LeBron James did with Florida and M. That was the biggest apparel contract in the history of black colleges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two have yeah, they've done a lot. So yeah, man. Well, you uh, so uh, so Musa, I I give you a question. I I think Mr. Ford gave me this question yesterday. You got thirty minutes to sit with the SWAC commissioner. Tell me what in those thirty minutes. What would you uh uh, uh commissioner of the SWAC? 
You you said what would I ask him or what would I suggest? No, what would you tell him? What would, what would be you your advice him? to him? Yeah. Okay. Um I think I think number one, like she uh, I'm sorry if I messed up your name, but is she I love or the I, she the She I loves the she loves the yeah. I would say that it was a poll, I think uh Kofi Hemingway sent it from FAMU. The network I don't know why I always said this. The stories in the swag is like it don't even make sense. Like I read up on Paul Tank Younger from Grambling. He was yeah. he is not in the, he that's needs right. to be in the NFL Hall of Fame. He was the very first first HBCU that's right player drafted. That's right. And he, yeah. and he, he was also the very first black executive in the NFL. Um, yeah, he was a general manager. Yeah. And he was a two-time All-Pro. I don't know why this guy's not in the Hall of Fame. It don't even make sense, but that's another story. But I feel like we should have a SWAC network. Even if it's not, a, I feel like HBCO Go can do it, but the SWAC, it, I don't know if they want to do like a joint venture or something like that, but it needs to be our own soul network. And it doesn't take that much startup. All you have to focus on is the cameras. Right. And making sure the production is good. And I feel like Byron Allen is a beast in the media game. He owns studio, like he, like people know about Tyler Perry. He owns campuses of like networks where he owns news stations. He did a big deal about like three years ago, but that needs to be priority number one because these kids gotta know about. It doesn't matter if it's if it's there. It's like having gold underneath your house. If you or oil, if you don't know it's there, you're not gonna be rich. So we gotta expose this this gold that we're sitting on. And then after that, facilities need to be made a priority. I don't care what nobody says. Then they need to figure out how to. There's no way you can't tell me that they can't get funding. I was looking at the numbers. I'm about to start tweeting Power Six because the swag is the six underneath the um, the not the Big Twelve. The uh, what's that other one? ACC. The swag is leading all the numbers. I go on YouTube. I see games with JSU and Grambling got five hundred thousand views. Right above that is bowl games, FBS bowl games. There's no regular season games above the swag. So you can't tell me that you can't find funding. Like you got to get creative. So I would say number one, a network, and number two, this might be more universities. They need to focus on getting not the top of the line, but just better upgraded facilities. Right. Somebody said we need to get get in touch with Amazon, but I, how would you think, uh, DJ? What do you think if we got in touch with Amazon as far as uh, getting our content? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, so if the money is right. That's number one. It's all about the money. And if the quality is there, I, I, it, it, anybody that has better quality than the bullshit we saw on ESPN 3 and 2 and all those uh, platforms is okay with me. Um, that that was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And uh, HBC, Just to point out that that's not ESPN. That's ESPN plugging into our system and basically so that's yeah, it's it's, it's on it's on the school. The worst one that I saw was the Southern Heritage Classic. Oh lord, that was probably the most ghettoest <laughs> streaming <laughs> that I've yeah. ever seen. The Southern in Heritage Classic was 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 now bad. the idea was good if they had it right to where they could you know have the score on there and the time and streaming from their own platforms, that's good because you're getting streaming, you're getting paid for that. But I think we, we talked about this a little bit yesterday um, about streaming and people would rather pay five to ten, five, I would say like five to six dollars a month for a 12 month subscription. And if you get 10,000 subscribers that's better than when you charge $25 to watch a football game because one person's going to pay that $25 and then they're going to go and stream it on YouTube. Yep. But if it's only $5 a month or $6 a month for the whole season, then that's something that somebody would be like, okay, I can do that. So not only are you getting up your subscribers, you're also um, maintaining money coming in. So I think that's something that should be done. I, I think Steve Campbell said something about doing a SWAC sports like media pass or something like that, where they get access to all the games in the SWAC. I think that's the best thing too. Because a lot of people, like you said, you know, 
a lot of people weren't going to pay $25 just to see one game from Jackson State, whereas somebody that was actually streamed, they paid $25, they actually streamed the game on YouTube. And they get like 3,000 viewers, and then you'll go to another channel, and it's 500 viewers, and then mm. you go to another channel, and it's like 6,000 people that are watching this game for free on YouTube when all you had to do was get those people to pay a 5 to $6 a month fee and have access to all the games. Yeah. Hey, I would like to thank AD. He said Jake Gaither's record was 206 wins, 36 losses, and four ties. And I think he started coaching in the 40s. He ended in 1969. So, you know, if you go back and look at the, the 1950s, he, he was basically unbeatable. Like you, somebody said that uh, Eddie Robinson couldn't uh, handle Jake Gaither. The only people that could handle Jake Gaither was a guy at Southern named Arnett Mumford and the guy at um, Prairie View. His name was Billy Nix. Those are the only people could cuff, could handle Jake Gaither. Jake Jake schooled uh, Billy. I mean uh, Eddie Robinson, and so did Arnett Mumford. I like yeah, I like the Hulu idea also. Go with Hulu. Uh, I you know like you said we, we was talking about this the other day. Uh, YouTube TV. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You use that and make it as a package, or just use regular YouTube and stream the games and get monetized, and you know, take gifts on to the swag, and you do the rest and keep for yourself. I like That's Hulu because I think if you're if you were a Sprint subscriber, you get free Hulu. See, there you go. And you don't have to ever pay. You always have Hulu. And then you also got um. So like like I said, like I was saying with Mississippi Valley, everybody, if you watch a Mississippi Valley stream on football or basketball or whatever they have as far as their sports con you know, content, the camera work was good. The camera work was great for them to be in Itabina. Um they had their own, they had their own overlay. And they showed the scores, the timeouts, the 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 play clock, the the game clock. Um, they had everything on there, and I don't think they had was the 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 country <laughs> announcers, but it was good enough. It's good enough for them to have it on YouTube, and they the school as a whole can monetize off of that right there. Listen, let me say this. This is EA says, love Coach Gaither, but got to say he didn't play nobody. Look at his games against Tennessee State, Alabama State, Tuskegee, Graham. Well, EA, I challenge you to go back and read the fact that he had one of the first interracial football games in the history of America. It was uh, Florida a and defeated the University of Tampa. One of the players on the University of Tampa's team was John Matuzak. Matuzak went first round to the Houston Oilers. So what you talking about? <laughs> hey, he just dropped the bike on you, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But hey, yeah. dog, man. Yeah, Yo, go ahead. About, yeah, I'm about to uh, head out. Got to wake up in the morning and work, man. But I appreciate you uh, sending a link for the stream. Everybody oh, yeah. on great, gave great points, man. Y'all have a blessed day, man. All right, DJ. Have Thank a good you, one man. now. You too, Mr. Ford. You too, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Musa, peace out. Oh, yeah, man. But, yeah, with, with – with, I'm just saying, just, just with Ed Reed, this – this is gonna be a good. It's gonna be a great hire. This is gonna make uh yes, this place is. look good. And this is yes. if, if, in and in all honesty, y'all. This was supposed to be. This was how the swag was supposed to be. Actually, this season, you supposed. I it, it, don't kill me, Timona. You supposed to have prime over at the Jackson State. You had Hugh Jackson at Grambling. You got Dooley at Southern. Bubba McDowell at Prairie View, and then if they would not, if they would have let Terry Sims go, you were supposed to have Ed Reed over at Bethune Cookman. 
Like yeah. literally, that's how the swag was supposed to be with Willie yeah. Simmons at uh, FAMU. That's how it was supposed to be this past season. Right. Now it's a different look because of the fact that, yep, he got on to Colorado and and now I don't say I don't think it brings parity. It does kind of bring parity into the conference, but it all like I said, it all depends on that first game and that last game for the first game for fam and the last game for fam. And 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 how that their season is gonna turn out. Well, one of the things I see, like I said now, they've been doing about 55000 at the Florida Classic. With this guy, Ed Reed, coming to Bethune-Cookman, and he's successful in the first and second year, you're talking about crowds of 75, 70 to 75,000. I don't know if – Mr. Campbell, how many uh, – what is the attendance, the maximum attendance at uh, World Camping Stadium? What is, is it 69? Because I know they cut some seats out. So I think a, a sellout night world camping is sixty nine thousand, isn't it? Mm. Does anybody know? Uh, world camping is in Orlando. It used to be called the uh, Citrus Bowl. Citrus Bowl, yeah. I think it's sixty nine thousand because they cut some seats out. But whatever it is, it, it, with, if if Ed Reed does well, now I know Florida and them gonna bring their crowd. But this this gonna add to Bethune. Like I said, what it's gonna turn into. It's going to be a civil war. It's going to be North Florida, that Big Ben area, versus South Florida, primarily Tampa and Miami. That's what that Florida Classic is going to turn into. So the capacity for for the world uh, camping uh-huh, is 60,219, but you can That's expand right. it with another 5,000 seats in there. Oh, okay. So we're talking 65? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So they took out a lot because that stadium used to hold seventy five thousand, didn't it? Right. Yeah, they so took they out did. a lot of they took out a lot of seats. Um, they did some they like they did some major upgrades yeah. and renovations to that stadium, and then also because um, you had a soccer team. I think you had yeah, a, that's you know, right. Soccer team there. Yeah. They kind of cut yeah. it down, but they got their own stadium now. Yeah. So now. Um, it's going to be sh- so basically the uh Orlando team for the XFL is going to be playing in there also this year, yeah. For, well, for, I know that uh, the city of Orlando has appealed to the uh NFL, they want an NFL franchise in Orlando. I don't know if they'll ever get it, I'll let somebody else tell it, but I know that they have made us uh, put in a petition to the uh NFL to get a franchise in Orlando. Blue said that it's gonna hit 60,000, 65,000 next season for that for that Florida classic. Yeah, I can agree I'm gonna have to that. give me I'm gonna have to give me media credentials now. I don't okay. care what anybody says. Oh, I to get media credentials. Yeah, and then you can listen when you get finished covering the game, you can go over to Disney World and pretty much. <laughs> yeah, you can go over to Disney World. So Mr. Forrest say ain't number white folks in the Big Bend area, so. No, no, you got, uh, remember the boy Felipe Franks? I think he's with uh, the Falcons. He He's from that Big Bend area. Okay. Yeah, uh, I always thought that when Willie came in that he was going to put a fence around Tallahassee because it's a lot of talent right there in that Leon County area. There's a lot of talent in that area. That's a lot. And then, you know, if you go down I-10, I think they call that the panhandle. Man, you talking about some super yeah. athletes. That panhandle in Florida, man, that's that's Auburn. That's University of Alabama. That's University of Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's every, That's Florida. All of them get them play. See, that's uh, Niceville. That's uh, Fort Walton Beach. That's Pensacola. Yep. Um uh, Mr. Campbell, where is that Eggleston Air Force Base? It's a lot of athletes around that Air Force Base. I can, once the one little town is called Defoniac Springs. You ever heard of that? Defoniac. Yeah, I heard of. I yeah, heard man. Of. It, listen, they are loaded with athletes in that area. So I got a question. This is a question. I'm um, gonna get Timon to answer. It's ask if this becomes a new trend for HBCU head coaching hiring. How does this impact those lower level coaches trying to work their way up the coaching ladder? Thank you for the question, Reggie. 
Well, it just, um, we already, we have Eddie George and we also have Hugh Jackson, who are both NFL, or well, Hugh Jackson, the NFL head coach, ex NFL head coach, and they're not doing so well. So I would say that it just depends on how good they build their program up. And um, if, like, if you have Ed Reed and he stays for three years and then he leaves, somebody has to take that place. Right. And so I don't, the celebrity hires, I think that they're great for um, HBCU football, but um, hopefully he'll take some lower level coaches on his staff. Similar to the way Dion says that he's um, trying to get more black head coaches and he takes all of his staff to be up underneath him. That's the same way you would do it at D1 football. So at every level, you're going to have um, give opportunities to various um, coaches to get to the next level. So I don't think that it's going to affect them to that point. Um, some of these lower level coaches might not want to go anywhere. Benedict College coach, he's doing phenomenal where he's at. Right. He need to move up. Right. Listen, uh, Troop Bearer says Bezos' wife is a big time HBCU philanthropist. The reason she's a big time HBCU philanthropist, she says that the greatest teacher she ever had was Tony Morrison. Do you remember Tony Morrison? Tony Morrison was a yeah, Howard University awesome. graduate. You remember mm -hmm. Tony? Beloved. Uh, she had one book called Beloved. Uh, uh, the bluest of eye and all of that. Well, that's why uh, the Bezos wife is giving all that money to HBCUs. That's because of Tony Morrison. Yeah, Blue just put in there. Also, Eddie Joy got, got to compete for the OVC this season for the next season, and if he can't get it done, <laughs> it's hard for um, it's hard for HBCUs to move to a conference with PWIs even though you guys are all on the same FCS level, they still have more resources. You better I've tell never, North Carolina a and thought, that. I've never you need to tell a and and Hampton that. They need to, I never thought that moving over to those conferences was a good idea. Thank um, you. It should Amen. Always, it should, there's nothing wrong with being in an HBCU only conference. Um, I Did think you hear that, that Dr. Glenda Glover? <laughs> I think that with the um, affirmative action that's getting ready to um, m possibly be struck down with all these conservative Supreme Court justices, a &T yeah. and Tennessee State University, they need to go back over there, have a little talk. And I don't know yeah. if you heard, they just came out with the stat. They said officially the, uh, the state of Tennessee has cheated um, – a Tennessee state out of a billion dollars. The state of North Carolina has cheated North Carolina A and T out of two point, uh, I think four billion, and, and the state of Florida has cheated Florida A and M out of a billion dollars. And then had the nerve to find them an extra two million. That's right. They're growing. Can so you believe well. that? And That's you know what the know. problem is? Black people don't raise enough cane. White folks, they'll be out in the snow with signs marching up and down the street right for protesting for something that they really um want action on black folks we just kind of just sit in there we might tweet about it but we don't raise enough cane about about it because yeah there should have been so much outrage and like i can't believe you're doing this that they would have said we've decided to um withdraw the fine against North Carolina A and T. We didn't cause enough ruckus for that. I, You're right. I, that was we ridiculous. Should have just if we would have raised enough cane on on Twitter and it would have went viral, they would have backed up off of it and said we're going to work with them on numbers of of getting more in state school. Um, excuse me, in state students to our school. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, so I, I I mean, and I feel what you're saying as far as like when, um, like, and my guy Dave is in the chat. He's in the chat too. Uh, he's a A uh, and T alum, and he gonna tell you that the chancellor <laughs> he ain't changing his mind for anything. Um, no, the chancellor's listening to Earl. I think his name is Earl Hilton. Uh huh. He's the AD, and he's going along with. He's basically okay in everything Hilton does, but Hilton has put Ant's athletic program in a ditch. That's what he's done. So my 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 thing about that is that that's a dead horse you going That's a dead horse you beating right there with uh Ant. Now, I would say as far as when it comes to. Hampton, um, that's you know that's coming on coming from the the past pres president that's about to resign. Yeah, he's that, gone. That's uh Dr. Harvey, William yeah. Harvey. Uh huh. He's yeah, been he's there. Gone. He said they've been there for almost forty years. Yeah, he's been there. Yeah, he was a uh, t uh, matter of fact, he went to the same school Deion Sanders got his degree from. They're from Talladega. A Talladega. Mm -hmm. That's where his. Uh, that's where he uh, got his undergraduate degree. In fact, I'm about to send this link to to my guy Dave. He's gonna come in on the chat. So but yeah, I, I mean it's a lot of to me, it's a lot of people that's not gonna it's it's a lot of people that's not gonna budge on that. There it's a lot that's not gonna budge. You're talking about A and T and Ha and Hampton? Right. Now Hampton oh, might my Hampton yes, might Hampton might make a decision like if the CAA ain't working for them. Oh, it's not gonna work. But see, here's the thing about Hampton and North Carolina AT. They're going to be all of the teams in the CAA, that's gonna be their homecoming opponent. And that's what Hampton's gonna be. And North Carolina AT. They're gonna be everybody's homecoming opponent. You know how they do Virginia Lynchburg? You, you ever heard of mm -hmm. Virginia's Lynchburg? Yeah. Okay, you know how they do them, right? Everybody use them for homecoming. Yeah, that's what the CAA gonna do to A and T in uh, Hampton. Mm. Uh oh, I got my guy Dave from the Panther uh, Panther Nation podcast. A and T alone. What's going on, Dave? Man, what's going on, guys? I'm just rearranging my cave right now, but it's a freaking disaster in here. But what's going on, guys? Man, we good. We talking about Ed Reed and the and his hire for Bethune Cookman. And yeah, then, I've been listening for the last 20 minutes or so, man. I, I had to hop in to talk about the whole thing about the CAA, and I just wanted to let Mr. Ford understand one thing. Those decisions that are made, there's a false perception that Earl's making these calls. <laughs> I just want you to, I just want you to understand that. It's a false I'm perception. I'm sorry, what did you say? Earl, it's a false perception that the AD is making the decisions when it comes to the conference changes. Those are coming straight from the chancellor, my man. Well, listen, there's some bad decisions. Look, I, I look, I don't necessarily agree with everything that Chancellor Martin's doing, but he has, he has built enough goodwill for now, for now, and I'll leave it at that. Oh, he's a brilliant man. I think he has a PhD in physics, right? Uh, let's go engineering. He got us. He's yeah, he's Aggie. a brilliant man, but yeah, he's yeah, just he's an Aggie. So listen, but. But and I say this to everybody: before I mean, Deion Sanders check, uh, touched down in in Jackson, Mississippi, the best athletic program in HBCU sports was North Carolina a and They were winning in football, girls basketball, men's ba uh, basketball, baseball. They had one of the best track and field programs, probably the top five in the nation. I know the guys left now and gone to UT, going to University of Tennessee. But th this stuff that they doing now, the last uh, two three years. Taking them out of the MIAC, they basically wrecked that program. Now you well, you you were supposed to win the Big South, okay? Uh, you didn't even beat uh, that school yeah. is called Gardner Webb. All right, yeah, we lost so now this here's the thing: Gardner Webb too, beat you, and now you're talking about you going to the CAA. You are gonna get beat? You listen, Gardner Webb can't play with Villanova. Gardner Webb can't play with uh, Richmond. Gardner Webb can't play with uh, Delaware. So, you, listen, be, you're going to be the homecoming opponent for everybody. It'll be interesting. I'll say that. But I but I just wanted to clear that up, man, because I think Earl 
Earl has done a great job as an AD, but sometimes decisions are made above him, and he's got to play the game that's in front of him. He's got to play the cards that's handed to him. And I think right now with the whole fiasco that happened with the coach, it's going to pretty much come to a head. It's going to come ahead real fast. It's probably going to come to head real quick um, because cause that was a chance of decision as well. Hey, Blue, how many games a t going to win next year? <laughs> More than Hampton, I'll tell you that. <laughs> More than Hampton. Let's see what happens. Let's see who, who are coaches we hire. We'll know by next Wednesday. So okay. basically what you're first. saying is North Carolina A&T is going to be renamed Florida Memorial. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Listen, no. I keep telling y'all, I'm going to say this again. You want to – A&T wants to play Villanova. Villanova spends $58 million on sports. A&T spends $16 million. What's the difference? Somebody tell me. A lot. A lot, but, but there's more. But, there's more, but there's more than there's more than football. Yeah, I'm about, we 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 already know where that money's coming from. That money's coming from straight up basketball, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's more than football, man. Like I, like for example, like they start, they're gonna be in in conference play starting Thursday. I'm going to the game. They're playing Northeastern on Thursday. Okay. I think we'll probably go. We're now, probably Northeastern go is that Boston? Where, where's Northeastern? Yeah, that's in Boston. That's in Boston. that's Reggie Lewis's there. school, right? Yep. I believe. Yep. 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 Yeah, yep. that was Jim. Jim Calhoun used to be at that school before he took over college basketball at UConn. Yep. Yep. And what was so, the reason for North Carolina A and T moving? Like, what what did they have in mind, or what was their vision when they said the MIAC not doing the way what they're that, supposed so to be doing? Back in twenty, about a decade ago, they did us. They went. And they did a re they did a study because they wanted to leave the MEAC. And they did a study about a decade ago about their options regarding what where they should go. And they came back saying that the recommendation was the CAA. But at the time, that was back in 2013 when the study came back. And at the time, it didn't make any sense because they knew they needed to raise money to make it happen. Um, but they made the decision that, okay, we'll probably do either A. You know, this is why they're going through a transition period with the new chancellor, because at this point, the chancellor is brand new, relatively new at the university. Chancellor Martin got there in 2009. So, but they were already looking into trying to make a move outside of the conference back then. So they and did it 2022, 2023 move based off of 2013 numbers? No, so in 2015, they, in 20, they didn't move to the Big South in 2019. You can't move to another conference without an invitation. Like, you can't just say, oh, I want to jump to another conference. You got to get invited to go to another conference. You got to get approved by the other conferences in the board. So they moved to the Big South after the 2019 season. And then, then everything that happened with the ruling with the NCAA nice. and the CEA called and, 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 had a, and invited us to the conference and we accepted. Because that was what was recommended back in 2015 when the that was recommended back in 2013. Okay. So, so boy so, said that he spoke to A&T's associate AD about six years ago, and they were ready then. They said they were bleeding cash with classics. So basically what that means when they say bleeding cla cash with classics, it means that more than likely there was a third-party promoter who had their hand in the pot because the yeah, classic contract wasn't structured correctly to profit off of it. So I think A and T move was it wasn't a good move. I, I'm always gonna say well, and I agree with you, but the other thing that he's leaving out that he's not telling you is that the A and T athletic director and president despised the leadership of Dr. Dennis Thomas as the commissioner of the MIAC because the only thing Dr. Dennis Thomas wanted to do was do photo ops. He didn't have no new ideas. He didn't do nothing new. He didn't read no books. All he wanted to do was photo ops. And so that's the primary reason why they wanted out of the MIAC. Because what A&T attempted to do, they attempted a coup on Dennis Thomas by getting the presidents to fire him. And he, they didn't understand that that man is corrupt and that he was basically giving all them presidents money. And that's, what they, that's why they wanted to leave the MIAC, because they couldn't fire Dennis Thomas. Mm. 
But ain't it the way? But ain't it supposed to be then, the other but, way around? Then, top, then the other, the other, the other explanation too is that Chancellor Martin has been about being part of like peer institutions, and so like when you you got to remember too, A and T is a state school. There's 16 state schools in the state of North Carolina. Five of them are HBCUs, okay, and the other 11 are PWIs. So when you take all that take those things into account as well and you compare the peer institution there's only one hbcu that's considered a peer institution and i don't can you guess which one that is Johnson <laughs> Ford, Smith? Ford, nope florida a and so all the other institutions are pw all the other peer institutions are pwis so the thought was they wanted to be in a conference with other peer institutions that do more research that are more that, that have more r1 institutions within the fold because they have a goal of going to r1 and i do agree that the athletic conference does not have anything to do when it comes to your research dollars and things of that sort. Because I know for a fact that Morgan State, Florida A&M, um, Howard, all those institutions are also on the march towards R1. I think Prairie View A&M is as well. But from Chancellor Martin's perspective, they believe to be in a conference, they want to be in a conference with more R1 institutions within it. And the CAA has four full-time members that are R1 institutions. So they're going to not get counting football because football is a unique thing. Because football, most almost half of the schools that are in CAA football are not full members. Like Rhode Island is not a full member. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's some schools within the CAA football construct that are not full members of the CAA. Well, I will say this about the MEAC: there is no way on God's green earth that. I would be an HBCU national champion two years in a row, and all we hear about is the swag. Four out of five. Four out of five. So, yeah, her five. But <laughs> most, most importantly, as we've had this much exposure, nobody. You asking me? You asking me at school? If you asking me at school right now, have they benefited from the amount of? coverage that they've gotten they're going to tell you probably not as much the only time they get it is when they beat you guys in the celebration bowl and but That's they're the not capitalized what i'm saying is they're not capitalizing off of these wins well i think south carolina state did because if you remember how rough south carolina state had it went prior to them getting to the bowl when it came to enrollment and things of that sort mm -hmm. i think south carolina state they could have taken more advantage of it than what they did but they were able to capitalize when they beat you guys last year because their enrollment skyrocketed. So it yeah. helped them. Because yeah, they were on the brink. Like, I, I don't think, folks that, understand I don't how close think that State was. enrollment was, I don't know, maybe it was football. No, I, I know it was. I'm from yeah, South Carolina. It was. From it, it did. It did. It was a mess. It yeah. was bad. Like, I have family yeah. that was going there. They were worried about their accreditation going away. Yeah. There was a lot but of But Nikki Haley tried South to Man close the school. school. Remember Nikki Haley? They damn near, they damn near closed the school. Yeah, like, she tried to close the school. Tried to close the school. Because it was a state school. One of yeah. the only states HBCUs in the state of South Carolina, and they tried to put administration there to shut it down. Yeah, I think at the time they played Jackson State in the Celebration Bowl, they had less than two thousand students. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yep. You talking about South Carolina State? State? Yeah, yep. South Carolina State had less than two thousand students. Wow. Now, I'm telling you, Nikki yep. Haley and them, their plan was to close uh, South Carolina State at that point between Nikki and then McMaster. Yeah, they were trying to shut it down. Well, see, here, here's the down. thing. Here's the thing you need to understand: the money was diverted from South Carolina State to Coastal Carolina. You got to remember now, Coastal Carolina didn't become a college until 1974. The money that was supposed to go to South Carolina State, the state diverted that money to Coastal Carolina. Mm. And it's that's what they did. That. Yeah, I see that now. That. You got to consider. You got to consider what else is in the state too. There's a USC not too far. From South Carolina State, then you got USC Columbia. Right. They want their money too. There's a bunch of other state schools that are taken care of, but typically South Carolina State's the last thing thought of. It's the only HBCU they got to pay for, and then they will use the excuse of Claflin University right across the street, a private HBCU that's taking care of their own, not worried about anything because their alumni gives back. They got the highest percentage. That's what they use as an excuse of why they don't have to give money and take care of South Carolina State without understanding understanding that that's their obligation as a state supported school mm. so it's a different it's a different type of ball game when you when you when you're talking about state supported schools in these red states but you should know that from in mississippi too like there's different levels of challenges north carolina is the same thing 
A&T goes through it, so does Fayetteville State. They try to close some of the smaller HBCUs down in North Carolina as well. Yeah. So, what you, so I got a question for you, Dave. So uh, what do you think as far as we're going to go? I'm going I'm to segue back to uh, Ed Reed. How you feel about what what is going his effect going to be for Bethune Cookman? What is effect going to be for the swag as a whole? I tell you what, man, you can't you can't you can't be mad at the title, but I think for Bethune Cookman it came just in time because you want to talk about a school that's been going through some things. I mean, they've been having some accreditation challenges. They've been having some enrollment challenges. Their enrollment's been falling like crazy over the past couple of years. Yeah. So for them, this is big for them. Like, this yeah. is going to go past football. Like, I think winning games is important for them, but I think for Ed Reed, it's more about him being more of an ambassador to the university mm-hmm. and trying to get the enrollment out. Now, but they still got to fix their administration problems because there's some administration challenges within the school as well. Like, there's a lot of other things going on, and I hope to God that Ed Reed has some level of patience to, to kind of sit through that shit because there's going to be some challenges. I mean, that's just the reality of it. I think he. Like I, I think. I think he. I think he has the patience until it starts affecting. Hit is till it started affecting the football team, and then I think that's when his patience is gonna wear real. You know what I'm saying? Start gonna wear real thin, and then he's gonna want out of there. Yeah, man. I I always have this. Always have this thing, man. And I and I and I said this when McCure Maker made a decision to go to Howard. I always say it's great when when these when these folks make the decision to come to an HBCU, but I always say it's it's, it's about going to the right one. Right. And right. I hope there you go. And I, and I hope and I hope because I think this can work, man. And I hope Bethune get this shit together, man. Just long enough to capitalize on this because this is a phenomenal opportunity for them. Well, yeah, I think it they is. back just kind of like they did with um. Well, they'll probably learn from Dion's mistake, but I don't think that um, Ed Reed is has that same type of persona. Like Coach Prime, he just would push and push and push. I need training tables. Okay, we got you a training table. I need this. I need this. I need that. You're not giving this to me, so I need to um I need to leave because you're not giving this to me. Like whoa, 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 hold up now. You know we don't have it like that. You knew when we when what you signed up for, and he was just pushing so much. So for Bethune, I'm hoping that they will support him and not make it a challenge. But I think that Bethune, as a whole, they want to see the school grow and go back to dominance. So he can just come in and tell his speech. I'm here to win. I'm here to grow um, the football program and be dominant again. And that's all he has. We've to got say. out of it. And nobody, nobody's gonna question anything if he leaves in two to three years. No one's gonna say anything because that's all he has to say is, "I'm here to win games. I'm here to um, grow the school and hail Wildcats. Let's pray together." And boom, that's it. <laughs> no, no, leave God out of this. Just leave God out of this. No, that's their saying. Pray together. Oh, yeah, that is their saying. Pray together is their saying. That's like that's like their one of their little hashtags. Pray together. Wow. Basically, that's yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we just, we just, 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 just don't, don't. I don't want him saying God told him to show up to, to Daytona Beach. All right, just, just show up and say you want to win some football games. I think he might stay longer than Dion personally. I just hope Bethune gets their shit together when it comes to the administration because it's a mess right now. They yeah, got to fix is. that. They yeah, I, I, that. I think, well, I don't know. To me, it's more of the. I don't know if it's the donors or if it's that board of trustees that that's getting in that way of everything that's going on. Because, uh, like you said, it's the, the instability at the school is already has already been documented because they're on their third interim president school president uh, scotty said some story about the the board the president the, the president that they wanted to pick it's on the board and the board and so like the board is giving the, the interim presidents to live in hell they got to fix that one buddy they got to get whoever that guy or gal is out of there immediately mm. yeah they gotta, they're attempting they to decertify that. the board weren't they they got to do something yeah, that, like they, 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 they got to do something. Like you can't, 
Like, because you can't have that type of structure because you're going to just have nothing but unstable leadership the entire way. And that's not going to be fair to, to read either. And when it comes to, like, Ed Reed being vocal about what he needs, I don't think, like, I think we're underestimating what Ed Reed, like, Ed Reed isn't Dion from the standpoint of Dion's always out there, but he's very vocal. Like, he'll be vocal. He just is more vocal in private than public when it comes to Dion. Yeah. Like, Dion had everything public. And that's that there's a there's a which good he won't have he won't be public at Colorado. If there's a problem, it's going to be handled behind closed doors. Behind they got a public doors. relations team for that. There's not gonna no, be no, it's a called, situation it's, it's, where he's having a meeting talking and he says, Well, I didn't like that it was cold in my office. The heat wasn't working. I didn't like that. Like there's never a time you're gonna hear that in Colorado. That's right. There's five, there's five million reasons that's why. Right. He's not gonna hear that in Colorado. You're right. You, I mean, the the respect level and and the respect should whether you're making five million or you're making one point five million. There's a certain protocol that you have to handle. Dion knows it. Mm -hmm. He's always known it, and he's just cho chose at Jackson State to just air out everything. And you know, I think that's why some people are relieved that um, Coach Prime is gone. Yep. Just because he um, he was putting pressure on so many people. And to us, we're thinking, oh, my gosh, thank goodness somebody's saying something. Like when he would say something to the, about the governor. But behind closed doors, the president, the administration, they're getting calls like, yo, what's up with Dion? He's right. the coach. Yeah, he, he basically it's, it's, uh, he besmirched and maligned the character of the institution and the president while he was in Colorado. But he basically but it's, it's, insinuated it's, that they were stealing money from him. And it's and we all know too, that right? you gotta if remember. Dion had yeah. any money stolen from him, he would have said it by now. And he would have said it. the amount. Well, like, here's the thing you gotta remember: it's complicated too, right? Like mm -hmm. when Dion when Dion calls out the governor or something to that effect, you're impacting the university. Like it put in like, I never, I never thought about it until I realized how our chancellor moved when it came to certain things you asked him. Cause you got to remember who his boss is. Like you can talk about the funding challenges, but those are the same people you got to convince to give you the money. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a balancing act. You got to play with these politicians. Because those are the same people you gotta go ask for money from. So you gotta pick your you gotta pick your spots to when to scream about when you're not getting resources for certain things. I just think that their respect level wasn't there for a lot of it things. Wasn't. Now that I now that I look and see him speaking to the white folks. Right. <laughs> well, look, yeah. look. It's not even about that. It's about how he mar it's about how he it's, it's about how he who he associated with too. No, he cleared what? up when Deion Sanders Jr. when he said that, oh, they fired me because my the stuff that I'm posting doesn't align with, with the, what they want to university. He hurried up and cleared it up, even though it was in black and white, what the what his son said, he hurried up and made sure to clear it up. But people are accusing Jackson State of only paying you three hundred thousand, and you're just gonna run with that narrative. Like, but that's but that was part of his he, 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 That's what he does. He controls the narrative. That's what Dion but, does. I, I Dion, don't control Dion it in Colorado. The narrative the way he wants. Also, to. I, I just want I want Coach Prime. He's always like, oh, we're gonna fix the crime will be lower. That's if you watch his beginning of it when he accepted as head coach, crime will be lower. And um, enrollment will be higher. I'm wondering in Colorado, is he going to go um, to the public library that got shut down because it was basically meth university over there at the public library? They had to shut it down because there were so many drugs being done over there. I wonder if he's going to go to that library and, you know, help the community. Like, no, he's going to be a football coach. He ain't going to say anything about that. He ain't going to say nothing about that library, man. Yeah. Just remember. Just remember, Blue who just, put in there. just remember who he worked for. Just remember what contract he had before he showed up to Jackson State. He worked for Barstool. Look who backs Barstool. And I'll leave you yeah. there. Uh, then what Blue just said, said uh, about the uh, Bucky situation. He said Colorado, you know, Colorado didn't want uh, Bucky to make the money that the university thought they should get. 
I mean, well, yeah, that Florence, Jackson I mean, State didn't get. That, yeah, that's because true right that there, was, too. Well, that boils down to bad business by Jackson. But, but, but you know, those are the breaks. That's a lesson learned. That's just something that. But I don't know if Ed Reed got any kids out here doing social media for him either, right? So, but at the same time, we, we know we know that when it came to capitalizing on a certain pocket that you need to capitalize on, the stakes are going to be made because, you know, you never have somebody that, that polarizing that big on your yard, on your yard like that in that type of job. Because you you head football coach is like one of the most important positions on the yard. Yes, you want to is. think it's professor? You're right. You want to think it's a professor or as a chancellor? No, 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 no. Yeah. The head football coach is the mo- one of them. It is the most important job on that campus, which is why it's the front the porch to the institution. It's the front it porch to the institution. Why are you why the the as in the as, right now? As long as the message is great HBCU football, I think that the SWAC will be okay, and the MEAC. Um, the MEAC is going to MEAC. <laughs> the MEAC is always going to MEAC. The MEAC that, is going to show we, up. We, they're going to they're going to they're going to win the Celebration Bowl. They're going to win. They're going to win the MEAC Swag Challenge most of the time. And that's they just what they are gonna not going to win the MEAC Swag Challenge. Didn't they lose? What's this the year? record? Didn't they this lose? year, I said most of the time. I said most of the time. Most of the time. Look at the record. Look different. Didn't they lose the year before that? No. No, nah. Central, Central beat all calls. Yeah, yeah. yeah that I mean, was the first. Like that, was, that was pretty much the first time you saw Davis Richard on. The, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that was the, the first, first time, time you saw, saw him. On the stage. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna shift this back up because <laughs> he said the prime man's getting restless over here, Mr. That's Campbell. True. <laughs> That's true. That, I'm sorry, Mr. Campbell. Let's talk he about the prime man's getting restless over here. <laughs> now, nah, but. But no, if you I, really... mean, I mean, it's gonna. But back to Bethune, though, it's gonna impact their big games, man. Florida Cass is gonna be insane this year. Willie Simmons versus Ed Reed. That's gonna be insane. Yes, it so, is. So I, I, I say this right here. So let's just say like this: your big games. Let's say Bethune plays Southern, and you know, we all know Southern brings a big old crowd. They don't care where it's at. They could go to Tim Buck. It could be the game could be at ten buck two, and Southern gonna show up, right? Let's just say they yeah. play in, in Florida. You're not gonna play. Bethune is not gonna play Southern, not in the the high school stadium. I would say they go to Jacksonville, or they could go to Orlando. Yeah, yeah, either one. Well, the thing is, the, the thing is now, right? You know how Dion complained about playing at the NFL stadium this last season. Mm-hmm. Won't have that problem now. You won't have that problem. Why? Because 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 they got a, they got a, they got a celebrity they got well I, I don't I hate calling Ed Reed a celebrity head coach because he's the NFL Hall of Famer but he's a he's like the guy he's like one when of the most popular players in the University of Miami ever had. Um, Dion was saying I felt like, bro, you know you're getting ready to leave. Why are you doing so much extra? Let's it's about him. Let it's about these him. kids play in the NFL stadium. That, but ain't that stadium. ain't that the narrative though? You trying to uh, what the narrative is trying to get the kids to to the NFL? Right. So why so you playing in the NFL stadium? Why are you complaining about playing at, at, at uh Hard Rock Stadium? Why are you complaining about playing at TIAA Stadium in Jacksonville? Because, because, because and then after it was all over, he said it was a great thing. He, it wasn't his idea. Yeah, it wasn't his idea. Yeah, I just it's don't, about I don't him, like guy. that, especially since. Um, it's about Dion, not man. trying to keep talking about Colorado, but isn't there a stadium? I don't want to talk about Colorado like either. Thousands? I've never been to Colorado. I've been there. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I'm gonna I'm I'm be I'm gonna be real honest with y'all. Campus is nice. I I'm not gonna I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna fool y'all. That campus I mean, is real nice. Like and real cold. Real yeah. nice. And real cold. Yeah, when it get by November, these when it, when it get by late October, yeah, it start getting cold. But I, I went around there in September. I know what I cold went, is. I went around there like August, September, though, and like on the real though, it is nice. Like to be up in Boulder, and then you can look at the mountains and stuff. But like you said, once that hawk come in from the mountains, it, <laughs> listen, man. Let me tell y'all something. 
I, I live in the Northeast. You know, I was happy to see y'all suffer a little bit and get some of that weather I'm used to last week. Hey, Doc, let me ask you a question. It was, what's up, Randy? What's going what's on, man? Listen, do you think this is a, a trend now in HBC? Like a trend, like getting a uh, not just a professional athlete, but a high-profile professional athlete to coach. To is me, I feel it would be a trend. To me, I feel like it's not. I mean, you can't say it's a trend. It could be a trend or not. Or so, but with Ed Reed, he, I mean, he's high profile because he, he's basically, arguably one of the best safeties in the damn world. Like I, you know, we talking about ball hawking skills. Like he, you could put him on the pedestal, like with Prime. You know what I'm saying? As being a ball hawk. Of course. But and he's a Hall of Famer too. Also a Super Bowl, you know what I'm saying? A Super Bowl winning, you know, Super Bowl champion. Mm -hmm. But to me, what the difference between him and Coach Prime or Eddie George, he rem he's he's more like Eddie George, laid back, you know what I'm saying? Uh he'll fire. I, I disagree. I, I won't say laid. I won't, I, I, let me take that back. He, I don't say he's laid back, but I think he he, he got competitive fire in him. He walks in that job with more experience than every single one of them. Okay, technically, yeah, but no, it's not technically. Reed, it's a huh? fact. It's a fact that man has assistant coaching experience in the NFL. Dion didn't have that. Eddie George didn't have that. Well, that's what. Well, talking about the street. <laughs> Eddie saying, George came straight off the street from uh, in Eddie Nashville. George came off the street. Dion ain't have no college experience. Dion ain't had no NFL coaching experience. And Robinson Jr. didn't have no college experience either. Well, that's what I was yeah. saying. Is this going to Ed, Ed Reed at least was on the coaching staff for an NFL roster for an NFL team? Say again. Like Eddie Ed Reed was on the coaching staff for the Buffalo Bills. He was an assistant for the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. So like he has he has NFL. He has a coaching experience at some level outside of high school or whatever. That's so what that's what I'm saying. Is this going to be an actual trend? Because I, I was just thinking, like, like you know, is he going to build up his you know little resume and then bounce, or you know what I mean? Like what? But what but, is, what but they what's the expectation? Right. If it was a guy, but if it was like a regular guy, if it was just a guy that wasn't like a high profile guy that just got his first head coaching opportunity, you should expect that guy or gal is that guy is probably gonna leave in three to five years anyway. Because that's just the cycle of the coachings nowadays. You can't expect somebody to be there for a decade anymore. You can't expect somebody to be there five to ten years anymore. Yeah, that's, like I that's, said, that's long gone. Yeah, like I said, we yeah, we ain't in those. We're not in the Bobby Bowden eras, the Eddie Robinson no. eras, or the Joe Paterno era. We're not even in those eras no more. I'm surprised that Buddy Pugh been at South Carolina State for over 20 years. You got a, you got uh, guys like Nick Saban. Hell, Nick Saban only been at Alabama for 15 years because he got there in 2007. Like he ran, he he ran away from the NFL to get to Alabama. He knew when that job was opened up. He what? He's about to go He's out there and try to win. He wasn't good in the NFL as a head coach because, see, Nick Nick Saban is a control freak, and you can't control people making ten and fifteen million dollars. He he wasn't good in the NFL at all. He, college was made for Nick Saban. Yeah. What you say, Simone? Oh, I was just gonna say. I think South Carolina State. I can't believe that they continually play all these Power Five money. They need the money. Pay out. They need the money. Yeah. Same reason why NIT plays them. Same reason it's why all the schools in the NBA play them. Program. It's just terrible. Yeah, it is. But it's it's all about a payout. It's about it's, it's about what well, the thing it's is. Saying, I think if, like, if the MIAC could not just MIAC, but uh, the SWAC overall, if they could just. Follow the blueprint. You know you have these classics, and that they bring in lots of money, but they need here's to structure the, the it so that they're capitalizing right. on the money. You should. Here's they the, should be able to take six or seven hundred thousand home a piece for some of these classics, and that's what two to three 
that's two to three money games because that's all you're making. Here's the, here's the argument I have against that. Every okay. HBCU in the MEAC can't pull that off. All right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be as clear as day to you. Every HBCU in the, in the main Central Atlantic Conference currently cannot pull that off. Matter of fact, one of the only ones that could is no longer in the mid Eastern Athletic Conference, and that's AT. AT and Central play the Aggie Eagle Classic in Charlotte. And well, they maybe both... not even just playing the big power fives. They need to be playing uh, regular FCS teams. Oh, no, they do. They do. Play like that. they do. They do. They no, do. No, but they like... also play more than one. Yeah, well, you got to remember they the They play Miami. Clemson the and South Carolina. So yeah, they play Clemson, South Carolina, your, and they'll your, play they'll play a Florida team, and then they'll play and then they'll play like two they'll play two teams in the slot typically, or or they'll play in a T if 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 it fits the I mean, if I'm if Are I'm, we talking about uh, South Carolina State? Yeah, right. I'm, yeah, they're not playing I'm FAMU not this year. School. Yeah. Uh, well, J- Jackson State. Not playing a T either this year either. Where yeah. you don't necessarily have to have a money game because we make so much money, and at our home games, and then all you have to but do is at your home game, get a spot. Everybody doesn't have a stadium that has 60,000, that can fit 50,000 people. Like, and now granted, South Carolina State Stadium, I believe, holds close to 20,000. Yeah, but yeah. all we, of the dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all the dollars yeah. hold about 20,000. Yeah, so like, but the thing you got to realize is that the attendance numbers aren't that high. Right, so right because I, I, I put it to you like this: like A&T, a team that completely A&T, loses. But A and T, A and T got a lot of heat for leaving the MEAC, right? Saying that their right. attendance numbers were going to drop, their attendance numbers were going to fall, the world was going to fall down. We were twelfth in FCS in attendance this year. <laughs> there was right. only four HBCUs that were higher than us, which was about the same as it was last year, and the year before that. Like, so I say all that to say that. It's about the brand of your university too. That matters right. as well. Well, like so, everybody the doesn't have that the same most brand. Of NFL players, so they need to work on their brand. There's no way. Yeah, no, I agree. Suck on the state. It's a travesty. But no- the thing is, Norfolk, Norfolk got higher attendance numbers than them. North Carolina Central got higher attendance numbers than them. Tennessee State got higher attendance numbers than them. Like the numbers are out there to look. Like, and then a bunch of swag schools got higher attendance numbers than them. They just That's don't do a why good I'm job. That there are certain games, like your homecoming, that you focus on, and instead of yep. you try to take home six hundred, seven hundred, or a million dollars on the games that are really big, that will make up for two to three money games. Because these money games, they're only playing paying three hundred thousand dollars, some four hundred thousand, well, and that's well, not you gotta a- check. You gotta check. I mean, AT, I mean, AT got three hundred thousand dollars playing North Dakota State, and that's an FCS school. So it all it all depends on the opponent. You've got other you've got Southern went to LSU down the street to LSU, got paid seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars just to get beat down. And then Alabama State got almost six hundred thousand just to go to UCLA, but they done burnt half of that because they had to send the band and the football team and cheerleaders. On you know cross country, that wasn't in the they, contract. Should, they should have had them in the contract. Okay, that should have been in the contract. Six hundred thousand dollars. It's UCLA. They have the money. Right. You Actually, they don't. That's the, no, that's no, 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 no. They yeah, no tomorrow. They don't have no, the money. The they're in. The, they're in the red. Right now. Yeah. They're in the red. <laughs> that's the reason why. That's the reason why they're making that move with U, USC. That's why they because it's the a big package 10. deal to go to the Big Ten, and when they Big Ten, um. The contract for the Big Ten starts up in 2024. UCLA is about to get 110 million dollars. Mm-hmm. Every school in in the Big Ten is going to get 110 million dollars, no matter if you suck at football or if you the greatest thing since sliced bread. You're a getting, couple schools in the Big Ten are in yeah, the red. Rutgers are in the red too. Yeah, you're getting 110 million dollars, and they're about to come up and be in the black. Yep. And they're getting that every year. But um, I understand what you're saying, though, Timon. I understand what you're saying. I was just saying that they don't, the money that they're taking home is basically 300000 in the clear. You can definitely get a sponsor to sponsor $300,000 to play a team that you can beat or to play or 
pay at one of your bigger games. I agree with you. South Carolina State should be playing Johnson C. Smith. Okay. Uh, Hampton should be playing Virginia Union. North Carolina NT should be playing Johnson C. Smith. Yeah, you're right. If you bring well, North, if you bring if you bring North Carolina A and T to Charlotte at Johnson C Smith, that's a sellout. Absolutely, well, we, we, and, and, we don't, we, and as long as you don't have third got... parties in the pot, you can get a person, an advertiser, because they already, I think it's called the Duke Mayo Bowl. Yeah, that's in Charlotte, yeah, we already got one. Carolina. They made the impact was I think maybe sixteen million. Yep. Oh, they wanted to do it again this yeah. year, but we couldn't get the schedules right. But we're going to do it again in 2027. Yeah. So what I'm saying, though, is that that's an economic impact. So if we're telling Charlotte we're going to bring $16 million, we need a million dollars per school in the clear, meaning a million dollars. So that means that those are two money games that you don't have to play. And now you can play with someone that you're more competitive with. That's better than taking these games that you know you're going to lose, especially for a coach. Well, I mean, that ain't fair. I mean, a and had a streak of beating some of these kids, man, beat some of these guys. So let's not – like like FC State Valley, they haven't beaten – they've beaten – they've been able to beat some big-time FCS programs, but they haven't been able to beat an FBS school. They beat, they beat Furman when they were in the top ten a few years ago. I guess Blue's saying that because of the conferences that – Hampton and North Carolina A and T is in. They can't afford to do that. They need to compete. Well, for well we only we well yeah because we got eight conference games now. We gotta have yeah we got we want to add large we want to have a side of that large bid so we can't play Division two schools. And we're gonna play we're gonna play Winston in 2024. We're scheduled so to play Winston the in 2024. Doesn't automatically get a don't you automatically get. You I get it. You get an automatic bid. The if you the saying that neither one of those schools is going to get an outright bid. No. So you you get an automatic. You only get one. Every conference get an automatic one automatic bid, but it's about getting the at large bids, and that's based on strength of schedule. But so when you no, play Division two schools, it doesn't help. Who's basically saying that North Carolina A and T nor Hampton would would get an outright bid, basically. No, you got to have a strong. You have to have a strength of schedule. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, it's it's just like if you was in a in in FBS. The reason why the reason why fam you didn't make the the tournament was because no, they didn't no, play anybody. CAA has an automatic bid. Yes, but oh, you're you talking about as far as basketball. Bid. No, I'm talking about you're talking about football. Football. Right? Okay, okay, okay. If, if you, yeah, so in football, you, they get an automatic bid. You automatically get in. Yes, if you win, but, outright. so basically, what Blue is saying is neither one of those schools are going to win outright. Well, no, Hampton's never going to win that conference. Hampton's never winning that conference. And I don't think A&T's going to win that And that's why I don't think that they should have moved there. I don't know. I thought that... But, no, they could, but the thing is, CAA sends, CAA sends what, what five was, schools every year. CAA what sends four to five teams to the playoffs every year. Why did they change? Because they were very just, competitive this year. All they had to do was the big South? Bar the web. That's no, it. the Big South, because the reason why they changed is because they almost lost their at-large bid. They almost lost their automatic bid. They mm -hmm. lost, they were down to, they were down to five schools. I'm talking about they had to in, go the, uh, in the Big South. They in the Big down, South, they yeah. Were down, they were down to five schools, and they had to add, they added Bryant University out of Rhode Island to get to the six to keep their automatic bid. And then they made the decision to merge with the OVC. And at that point, it destroyed the entire concept of um, going to the Big South in the first place. Because right. the original purpose of going to the Big South was to reduce the travel cost. Mm. That was the original premise. So you what out here adding schools, you out here adding schools out in Rhode Island, you out here adding schools to, to these other regions. So it destroyed the entire purpose of going hey, to the Big South in the first place. This guy named DeAndre Atkins, you said NCANT. Is the only HBCU that has beat an H FBS school. In 1979, Florida AM beat the University of Miami. Miami. <laughs> okay. I don't know if y'all forgot this, but Bethune Cookman beat Florida Atlantic when Jenkins was Howard, the head coach Howard at Bethune. Howard beat UNLV. And Howard yeah. UNLV. So, I know. Go so study not, history. I, I didn't agree. Don't don't say that I agreed. I know my history too, man. I got it. Yeah, we were, the, we, we were the only one to win three years in a row, though. But you know, we'll, but he we'll, said we'll, we'll it's the only HBCU that has beat an FBS school. Nah, 
We won three straight years. We beat in 2016, 2017, and 2018. Yeah, but Thune beat Florida Atlantic. Yep, they beat Florida Atlantic twice. They yeah. beat Florida Atlantic twice. Florida and them beat the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, back in 79. That was, 79. That was when that Snellenberger's first they season. Were, they were yeah, it was Rudy Hubbard. He had just come up that 78 uh, one double A championship. <laughs> and then Gram they said Gramley beat Oregon State back in 84, 85, yeah, too. So they did. Yep. that was 85. Yep. That was back when uh when Eddie Robinson was on the world tour. Because he used to play Hawaii too. Back yeah, too. he did. He played yeah. Temple. Don't you remember he played yeah. Temple in Japan? Yeah. That was that was man, what a time. Yeah, that's but, that you talking about we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that situation. I mean I, look, I already, I already said my piece about the CAA move, man. They got to put their money where their mouth is. So, so how gotta, y'all think? How you think um, the the um, merger with the OVC and the Big South going to be though? Because I, to me, that <laughs> kind of makes no sense. <laughs> that's going to get yeah, that it, that merger is going to get Eddie George fired. I'm gonna well, they I'm had to merge out. because if they didn't merge, the, both of them were going to go out of existence. No, they didn't have a choice. Football. They had to merge. It's only for football. It's not for any other sport. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The Big yeah. South, everybody goes there for a year or two and leave. Because remember, Coastal Carolina was in the Big South. Yeah. I want to say that uh, Kennesaw State was in the Big South. I think North Alabama was in the Big South. There was. Liberty. So you go there and you leave. So they had to merge because the conferences were going to die. What would it take for these schools to come back to the MEAC, and is that possible? Hampton's never going back. <laughs> they didn't want to go to the MEAC. I'm going to go to take it right now. Hampton didn't want to go to the MEAC when he left the CIAA. Oh, yeah, because Hampton, they was, the they Hampton, Hampton was D2 the for so long, since though. They yeah, they've been trying to get the CAA since they left to go to D1. CAA's always been the goal for them. So Hampton ain't coming back. So y'all can that, – that ain't happening. Never say that. No, once... nah, that ain't happening. Never say uh, Harvey's gone. If, if affirmative Hampton, action gets A&T, shut down, he'd have gone, come, now, back, come back to black. A&T going back to the MEAC, in my opinion, let me tell you what it'll take for A&T to go back to the MEAC. The CAA experience got to go so bad, it's got to be worse than when we were winless in football for three, for two and a half straight years. And it's got to be not just bad in football, it's got to be pretty much bad for pretty much every sport. It's got to be bad, bad. Like, well, I don't bad. know about the CAA, but it's gonna get bad, bad for North Carolina and T. <laughs> I know that. I think we get. I think we're gonna be competitive in some sports. Oh, we'll see. I, I think we're gonna be a sport competitive in some sports. Yeah, we'll, so you are gonna beat Richmond? You are gonna beat Delaware? And you are gonna beat Villanova? Right? I didn't say. I said some. I didn't say football. I think football is gonna. The first year is gonna be rough. You know, we think that's a coach. You gotta see who's gonna be the coach. That's the concern I got right now. We gotta see who the coach gonna be. So we got Dr. Cavill in the house. In, Shout in out the to building. Dr. Cavill. Shout so, out yeah. to Dr. Cavill. He already, you know, he said basically they have to merge so they can survive. Keep their bid. They had to keep their bid. Uh, Blue they said y'all ain't finishing above eight. <laughs> imagine, F- imagine. It, doing it depends on the opponents too. It all depends it, on the schedule. And it's a new coach. The new coach is already going to be on the chopping block. That's what they're going to do at NT. They're going to fire a football coach every two and three years. They're going to do the thing what Tennessee State's been doing forever, ever since they joined the OVC. There's 14 teams in that. There's 14 teams in the uh, CAA, right? Is it 14? No, it's 15 teams. Eight? Eight out of 15. Yeah, and they supposed to split the That's conference. better than next yeah. to last. Expansion into the Hampton, South. Hampton, Hampton was next to last. They only won one game in the conference. So... So they supposed to split, split the conference up. It has yeah. north and south, right? Yeah, that's why well, either it's going to be north, north and south, or they're going to do pods. If they mm. do pods, we'll probably be in the same one with Elon, Campbell, Hampton. So we'll see. And then we'll probably have to travel to some other schools. We'll see. They haven't told us what they haven't. They haven't said which way they're going to go yet. They're either going to do north south, or they're going to do pods. But there's no scenario where everybody's going to get to play each other. Fifteen schools in the conference. Is Maynard so, is Maynard on the on the chopping block at A and M? Uh, he needs to win this year. He needs yep. to win. They got a new president. Then plus they gave him a new contract a few years ago. He needs to win what? 
He needs yeah, to win some play. football games. That program went there. I think they won, what, three games last year? Four. Ooh. Yeah, they got to win. They got to win. And it's funny. ENT Alonso was talking about Maynard being the next coach, and I'm like, if you fire Shane Washington to bring in Maynard, I'll lose it. I'll lose my shit, man. <laughs> I'll lose it. And I know he's an Aggie, but I don't I don't see that as an upgrade in a head coach. So no, so. what y'all probably end up with somebody from BYU. That's what Earl nah. wants. Nah, it's what, what the BYU. chancellor wants. Yeah. The names I'm hearing, the names I'm hearing are interesting. I'll say that. Who are some of them? Uh, uh the guy from NC, the assistant at NC State, um, McNeil. Mm-hmm. Um, Ruffin, Ruffin McNeil. Yeah, Ruffin McNeil. Yeah, I know Ruffin. I've heard Ruffin that. gave uh, um, uh, the boy Lincoln Riley his shot up at East Carolina. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So another one, another name, Jerry Mack. Oh, Jerry's good. Um, I, I know Jerry. Jerry is, is uh was teammates with uh, T. C. Taylor at Jackson State. He left Jackson and went to Arkansas State. They reconnected at North Carolina Central. Jerry was the head coach. T.C. was the offense coordinator. Oh. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, B. A. and T. a couple times, too, when he was the coach at Central, too. Yeah. What One they time did, when he went to New during that run was when he was the coach at Central. Yeah. See, what that guy did, Jerry Mack and the guy Rod Broadway, they broke the stranglehold that Buddy Pugh had on the uh, MEAC. See, for years – Buddy Pugh controlled the MIAC. He 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 won yeah. it every year. He did. He did. Yeah, he dominated it. Yeah, Jerry Mack came in the bowl, and break that. And then the bowl game came up, and then A and T and Central kept them from that game for so long. Yeah. Then he finally got one. Yeah. I, and I forgot about Russell McNeil was the defensive coordinator for uh, Texas Tech with with Mike Leach when he was there. Yeah, he's Mike Leach. He also went to Oklahoma with Lincoln Riley. Mm-hmm. But he was the head coach at East Carolina. Right. And Lincoln Riley was his offense coordinator. Yeah. Lincoln Riley yeah. been everywhere then. Hey, Mark, uh, answer your, uh, ask us your question for, for the panel. And then the question, other question is, was, who's the stars in college sports? In what? In college sports. What do you mean, who's the stars in college sports? Like, give who's me – you got to – who are the stars? Who are the premier stars of college sports? Are you talking about all the, ACU football? Or are you all talking together. About all I'm together. talking about college sports in general. Yeah, I don't even. I can't even Bryce tell you. Young, CJ Stroud. I mean, the quarter. I'm always going to defer to the quarterbacks, man. Yeah. Bryce Young, CJ Stroud. Is that what you say, Mister Ford? What, what was the question now? Who are the who stars of college sports? Stars, who are the stars in college sports? You mean in all sports, or what are we talking about? Football, or we talking about all sports? All sports. Who are the stars? Yes. You got me. I, I don't know that. For me, it's Bryce Young, CJ Stroud. I'm going to go to the most popular one with the two quarterbacks. Yeah, Max Duggan. Uh, Will Levis, if you if you're into him. Yeah. I hope to mm-hmm. God we don't draft him in Carolina. Who is that? Will Levis, the the guy from Kentucky. Oh, yeah. I ain't a fan of him at all. The stars in college sports are the coaches. What? Well, I don't know if they're the stars, stars but I know they get all the money. They the get all the money, college. yeah, but the but, they ain't on, but they not the on stars, the field, though. They don't have to be on the field, Doc. When you when you talk about colleges, they're, so, they're associated with coaches. Marquee players are associated with the pros. Who's the, who's the Ohio State head coach? I have His no idea. Ryan, uh, Day. Ryan Day. No idea. I was about to say Robert Meyer. When you I say Ohio State, State, when you say Ohio State, Ohio State only associated really with one coach, and they had many, and that's Woody Hayes. Nah, I can't Jim go Trump with that. Jim Trussell wasn't bad up there now. Trussell wasn't bad. Trussell wasn't bad. Trussell wasn't bad. Trussell wasn't bad. We're talking about Urban Meyer was up there. Not even Urban Meyer. There many even, coaches, even, right? Even John Cooper, when he was there, and he know he was losing to, uh, to Michigan, for all those years, he was up there too. So I can't really just say Woody, just be just Woody Hayes. No, no, no I can refer State. to Woody Hayes. There was many coaches, right? There was many coaches, many coaches, but they refer to Woody Hayes as the same way they do Alabama. 
and, to, and they're always going to refer to her who first? Bear Bryant. Okay, and so Nick what, Saban now, sir. So it's Nick, Nick Saban, Saban, but that's so, still that's still the coach. The, the coach are the stars of the program. The coach. So is, what's the so what's the point with the question? Yeah, though? I'm about to ask you, man. What's your point? That was the point. Well, who's the stars of the program? All right. Oh. But once you understand the stars of the program, then you can start building around that. It was based off some of some things we were saying last night. Once you understand who the stars are. Then you could build around the stars. I, uh, I, I can't. I don't know about that, but oh, hey. let's, well, let's, well, well, I'm gonna say this. I got a podcast coming out. I'm gonna bring tons of information, tons of people on. When you talk about somebody going to Duke, they go there because of Mike Krzyzewski. Not anymore. Not anymore. Huh? He retired. He retired. No, no, no. He, we understand he retired, but he built that program. He did. Him and Gene, Gene Banks was his first big player to go there. But Mike Krzyzewski built the program. No, 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 no. Gene Banks didn't play for Mike Krzyzewski. He played for Bill Foster. Mm -hmm. no, Gene Banks played for Mike Krzyzewski. That was his no, first No, no, he didn't. He played for, no. Uh, Gene Banks played with Jimmy Spinarco, Mike Jeminski. That was uh, Bill Foster. And when, and when, no, you talking about Bill Foster was at uh, St. Duke. George? He was at Duke. No, he was at Duke. When did, when did Mike Krzyzewski come there? He Mike came Shemisky there in 80, 81. In 81. He didn't come there in 78? No, nope. it was Bill Foster. That's my – see, the other boy was from Philly too. Jimmy Spinarkle, I think, was from Philly. You need to no, look him only, up. No, only Gene. Only Gene. I mean, okay, Spinarkle, where was, where yeah, was Jimmy Spinarkle from? Spinarkle, I thought was from Texas somewhere. Okay, so we uh, we 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 going we gonna to shift this back to, to Ed Reed. So yeah, we got a question. Reed, yeah, we got a question about Ed Reed because we, when when you just dropped that that question on, I got confused. I'm gonna just be honest with you. I got confused. I to me nowadays, what? if you say the 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 coaches are the stars, the coaches ain't the stars. The coaches is basically the CEO. Your stars CEO. are your athletes on the field. So if you first of all, if you don't have a quarterback, if you do not have a quarterback on your team. To build around your to build your team around, then you don't have a team. Regardless, you don't star have a team. Star coaches gonna bring in star players, Doc. Star pro, star coaches gonna bring in star players. Shit, I, I mean, I, I'm be honest mm -hmm. with you. I, I seen star coaches bring in trash players, and that's when, if those trash players get star coaches fired. Because they feel like because they fit the 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 coaches that think they the stars think they're above everybody else. So but I'm only just, been, you can count on two hands. You can count on two hands. How many star F FBF coaches and I mean and football and how many coaches in basketball? You can count on ten hands. Who are the stars? We we gonna keep it strictly on football because that's what I'm the saying that you can count on two hands. It's not a lot of so, so about so about Ed Reed. Yeah, um, about Ed Reed. That was a great so, hire. Phenomenal hire. Um, what's the expectation for the first season for him? Did we talk hey, about thank you for the question. Depends, but, uh, depends on that that staff. The most important staff. thing is who is he going to get for that uh, offensive line and offense coordinator. If they are good, they can win the the, the first year. They can have a winning season. Yeah, I, I'm like I don't, I don't. I'm just hoping that the expectations are set. I just don't hope. I hope folks don't expect him to do what Dion did this first year. That's all. I don't think we should be expecting that. No. That's all. I think that's that's way too much to ask for. Um, out of somebody. I mean, Alabama A and M has been doing bad. They've been doing bad. Uh, Alabama State, and eh. so they, no. I'm going to say should take a step up. They could, yeah. They should take a step. They, they don't have an offensive coordinator. <laughs> Mister Mister Ford is always going to be on. They need an offensive coordinator. Hell I think it's more just. A, I think it's, it's an offensive coordinator and, and a QB coach because you got to fix the mechanics on on. on Listen, if he ain't gonna go get an offensive coordinator, give the offensive coordinator job to Alex Jackson. Because we don't need to see Harry Williams again. Send him to the receivers where he belongs. Can I say something? 
Yeah, go ahead, Randy. You know, I just think now in this climate at this time, these kids are going to be going to these schools according to what coaches that that they know. You know what I'm saying? Like Reed. Reed is going to be able to recruit his butt off. Yes, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. In in Louisiana and in Florida. Yeah. You know what I mean? So don't forget the DMV. Yeah. Yep. Baltimore area. Yeah. And Baltimore has one of the biggest uh prep schools in the country that yeah. uh that uh St. Uh, Francis. Yeah. If he can get in there, it's over. It's over. But he has to have coaches that can help him re re um, crew. Like if if he could somehow just bring in like Ray, not even the coach, but to just help him build build that program. I'm telling you, I I can definitely see another Jackson State style thing going. Do you think hey, he can get Warren Sapp? Mr. Ford. Sure. No, I don't yo, I mean if he gets Warren Sapp, that'd be insane. Depend on the like depend on if they could pay him because Sap is in a position now where 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 he's just coming back from his you know his little slight legal stuff. Now he wants yeah. to get back in the light. This is a perfect spot spot for him. He's home. It's in Florida. You know what I mean? Yeah. He'll, he'll oh, be yeah. able to uh, recruit. You know. But the but the only thing about like the difference between Reed and and uh, Prime is see Prime has a has a machine behind behind him. You know what I mean? You don't think Reed don't? You don't think Reed don't have a machine? Boy, I think it like Prime. Got a not, whole machine behind him, though. Not really. like Prime. I think, not I, like think Prime. I think just not because like I think you guys are taking you guys are underestimating that man's silence. No, I think no, he's no, not no. vocal. He doesn't no, have the machine. It's not. It's not that he's not vocal. It's just like Prime is a brand by itself. Reed Reed is is a Hall of Fame football player that's getting into c- c- coaching. I see what you're saying, Randy. Money. Though he probably made more money than Ed, than than Prime did. In no, nah, but because that's just timing. If but that still matters. <laughs> I mean, but that's and that's also personal money. It's not like outside. It's not something that he's going to. I would love to. I would love to answer this question. Huh? I would love to answer this question that's on the chat right now about ANT's program. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and answer that uh, question for me. Go ahead. My thing is this, man, when it comes to I think the, the biggest thing right now when it of why folks think it's gonna spiral into mediocrity is that we're playing in a tougher conference. The CAA is arguably the second toughest conference in FCS. And the key to being able to compete is having the resources. I mean, we're still in HBCU when it's all said and done. We're still gonna have resource challenges just like everybody else. It's just a matter of the levels of it, but now it's a different type of ball game when you think about the fact that we now we got to compete with budgets that are much higher. So I think we can compete, but the administration's got to be willing to invest. The administration's got to be willing to invest, and the boosters got to be willing to to put in more. But I think it starts with the administration being willing to invest and being serious about it. And right now, it's all talk. I haven't seen it yet. So uh, this is my, this me speaking as an alum. So, uh, oh yeah, Mister Mister Ford, uh-huh. Mister Ford. Uh, so, uh-huh. uh, Coach Walker had already put in. He put in the chat that for Alabama State, it wasn't the fault of Harry Williams. It was uh, Coach Eddie Robinson, oh, uh, uh, overstepping the boundary of the offensive uh, coordinator as far as taking over the play calls. So, I think that's the reason why you've seen so many. Like, if it was. Second and second and three, you see D Davis going and and trying to throw a pass like a a five yard hitch or something like that, but um he couldn't get it because maybe they was in the wrong personnel and he had to run, you know, pretty much kind of run for his life. I I, I mean it's a whole big deal, but it, it it's been done, you know, it's been 
notified. It's been documented that coaches overstep their boundaries from when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, the play calling. Listen, that guy Harry Williams got that Freeman man fired at Mohouse before he got to uh, Alabama State. So my thing is, go get a real offense coordinator. Go get a real one, because if you don't, you're going to run. That kid, D. Davis, is a, a legitimate four- or five-star player. Then you're going to ruin him? So I don't want to hear that. Just go get an offense coordinator. I understand. I feel yeah. you on that. Go get but. an offense coordinator. If it, listen, if you, if you have to, go get his high school OC. Go get <laughs> the guy he had in high school. Woo, he go to North Shore. He get that dude, man. It's over with. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Go get him. If don't, if you can't get him, get the playbook he used. I rather get that play. I rather get that playbook. Yeah. <laughs> I like what Tamona just put in there talking about. Can we separate the primates from D.I. Love? I know that's right. I, I think we need to separate. Hey, yeah. Brian, look, look. Just say you wasn't there for Jackson State. Just say you was there for for Deion Sanders. That's all we need. Go. That's all we, we that's all we need to know. Yeah. Just I'll be honest, I prefer the Dion Disciples. I call them the Dion Disciples. The Dion Disciples. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, like I, I'll give them two words, you know. You know, be, just like Dion was long winded, they deserve two words. The Dion Disciples. Yeah. Hey, but, have y'all know? Did y'all see the 19 players that Morgan State signed? Y'all better watch that Damon Wilson, cause he act like he want to take over black college football too. Uh, he's gonna try. He's yeah, gonna try. you better watch that Damon year. Wilson now. I get him. I I get him one more year in the me in, to 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 take over the MEAC, and when he get that second recruiting class in, yeah, for 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 Morgan like State. I, I already told Josh. I was like, Josh, man, y'all running out of time. Y'all better get another celebration bowl because it might be curtains after this year, buddy. Because he get especially he playing <laughs> especially him being a defensive, a defensive guy too. We seen what and, and you know you watch and you, we watch. I know I watch a lot of BA football. And I know you, Dave. I know you watch a lot of BA football. Oh, yeah, I do. And I know oh, you yeah. seen the defense as far as what Morgan State was running. It was. With 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 no type of recruits because he got there late, right? Yeah. yeah. If he gets a yo, once he get his players in, it's a wrap, guys. I'm telling you. That's why he, I said I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out when the when the swag gonna win a celebration ball. I'm trying to figure out what year that gonna be. Man, it might be a while for you guys, fellas. That'd be a bit. Man, look, we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we, it's gonna be a celebration bowl win. And, and, it's gonna be on say, the and, and Willie, and Willie, we believe, ain't it? And Simmons, we, we believe really? <laughs> it's time for Willie, baby. It's Willie time. If, what, if, what, yo, like, but the thing is, Willie's probably gonna be the next one to do it because of the because he he knows that conference, he knows the media, yeah. he knows them. Yeah. Everybody else in there don't know him. I've been told y'all, everybody in Atlanta from fam, you walk around with a smile on their face. Cause they say it's fam, you getting ready to take over the swag. I don't have why, to agree with why that. Why you say that? <laughs> uh, why, you, say. why you say that? That's what they saying. Uh, they uh, their whole rationale is prime is gone, and it's willy time. Yeah, I think I really know, got man. that too until until these recruits came in this past last week. <laughs> um, Let me tell you something. It, I, of course, it all depends on. Who they hire as the offensive coordinator? But oh yeah, that's what everybody waiting on. Now, do y'all have an offensive line coach? Than or than you got you waiting on one? What's? Mar- I think he probably got everybody in, in, but Marcuson went to Colorado. He already got his staff. He just waiting to get the uh, paperwork in. There's more to it than that too, because coach, it's I also about the O line. The O line coach. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah. You're right. He could obviously, yeah. Yeah, but I think he isn't he gonna uh Doc isn't he supposed to keep the same position? I think he's still gonna be director of recruiting still. Yeah, I think he is too. But <laughs> I would if I was him, I would go for I would see if he could get O line, but you know, I think he wanna stay as a director of recruiting because um he know he can get he can still have a relationship with with 
the players and the kids right. that come into the program. So I oh, figured yeah. he was. St- I think he would stay in that position. I, I wouldn't want. I, in, in fact, I wouldn't want him to move. I won't. I wouldn't want him to 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 move from that position. Right, and it's I, amazing to see like the difference between Deion Sanders and what type of players he was looking for, and you had. Uh, these coaches that have these connections to all (laughs) Mississippi talent and they're just kind of waiting coach Taylor like "Mm -hmm. when I become head coach I'm making that call and reaching back to all these places where I've been to get this Mississippi talent right yeah you're right I'm who yeah I want to bring somebody from Florida Florida was really good for prime these last two years. Y'all, y'all got some prime people out of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And Florida was good to Jackson State these last two years. But we have Mississippi, and that's where a lot of the talent comes from the backyard. There's so many mm-hmm. different four yeah. stars that come out of Mississippi. So it's great to see the. It, I was shocked. I was like, wow. Very impressed by that recruitment. So let me let me ask this question. I, I you know what? I, I know it's a big game, but I didn't like Jackson State and FAMU at Labor Day. I thought that should have been later in the schedule. I didn't like it as the first game. I've always I've been said that. I said that. I think uh, look, man. I said that last year. With their traditions. Don't be messing with their traditions. They attack. No, the that's the Orange Blossom Classic. I'm 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 just saying. Um, that's new. Th- yeah, that's new. But I'm just saying, I, I it was a big game for the last two years. But I wish it was like the sixth game or even the seventh or eighth game. Yeah, because that to me, that's a championship that's game. That's a better game late. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Because when it all comes down to it, it comes down to that first game. That's the only reason why we're talking about it being so early is because when it's the end of the season. That one loss for FAMU to Jackson State is what basically determines whether or not they're going to be able to go to beat the East. You just right. run yeah. through so, Jackson So, State. like, so, so the thing is, right, so a t used to play Central at the beginning of the season. When yeah, I remember that. Conference. At Carter Fair Stadium, we, yeah. Yeah. And then when we became, then when when Central went up to Division One and went into the MIAC, it became the last game of the season because it right. made no sense for it to be in the first game of the season, right? Because it typically would come down to us. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so then when we left the conference and headed to the Big South, what happened? We put it back at the beginning of the season, like a, a game that too important cannot be at the beginning of the season like that. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Mm-hmm. I've been, if, if I've been, those teams get better, and they have it at the yeah. first game, that hurts. And, and let's just say it like this, in a sense, um, Jackson State played FAMU beginning of the season, right? Yeah. This, this season. Okay. And FAMU had all the problems with the certification of the players and, you know what I'm saying, um, loses a couple of linemen from the previous game that they played against um, University of North Carolina. I would rather for that game to be played mid season. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I would mid-season. rather for it to be I would rather for it to be played mid season because now when you play mid like if you would have played that game mid season and fam would have had all their initial players that was that was uh ineligible because they was not certified correctly. Yeah, they will all come back in. And you will probably be, be minus two offensive linemen. Yeah, the game would have been more competitive. Is that Jackson of, still up wins though? I don't. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about yeah, that. They yes, they do. Well, see, yeah. what I want, what what so we hoping for. Season see, season when season I was in college, college, fam, you would play uh, Labor Day weekend. Fam, you would play. Uh, Albany State, a uh, Tuskegee. That Tuskegee game was always a big crowd. That's like twenty five thousand. Uh, or uh, 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 Fort Valley, and that's what I want them to go back to is you bring in the regional Division two HBCU school for that Labor Day, and then let's catch Jackson State and Fam maybe the sixth or the seventh game of the season, like you said, the mid season. 
And True. by the way, when is fam you gonna put Tennessee State back on the schedule? Is that they gonna ever happen? To. There's a they there's need. a debate right there's a vote, there's a poll right now about cause they got a they got a game available in Atlanta, I think. They they put a poll out, but I don't know who they're gonna end up playing. But it's between a for supposedly the poll was anti Tennessee State, Furman, and there was another school that they were thinking about playing. And T don't draw that well in Atlanta. Ant does not go that way. Listen, Ant came to the yeah. Celebration Bowl three times against Alcorn, and every time Alcorn outdrew the Ant people. I heard, I heard Ant was pretty damn flooded at the Celebration Bowl. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, go back and look at it. Every time that Ant went up against Alcorn, Alcorn had more people there. And I you were the largest the black year. university in America, and Alcorn had a little over three thousand. Well, we know, look, man, we know how it is. We know when it comes to attendance, that's the Swax Lane, man. That's what they brag about. We got better attendance at Tennessee State, though. I can tell you that. Yeah. You well, they just, listen, game, Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee State, State destroyed State. their uh, following when they joined that Ohio Valley Conference. They destroyed their following. Still, now, 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 we got, now, that being said, they still got high attendance. They're still among the highest in FCS. They, I think they were 24th this year. Eddie George, first year, they averaged like 2,000 fans at the uh, Nissan Stadium or wherever that place where the Tennessee yeah, Titans played. Yeah, but, they... but that was during They had COVID. only 8,000 like... for homecoming. But that they, I think they, that, they, that that's the reason why. But I think that's the reason why they started they moving the games guys. back on campus, though. Yeah, it didn't make no sense. Why are you going out over there to that NFL stadium with two thousand people? For well, what? It was during COVID too. Like I think yeah. folks got to realize that was that was the first COVID year last year. Now this year they busted. They were a little under ten thousand. They averaged a little under ten thousand this year, which was good. And that was back on campus. Year. I don't Majority know of those games were back on campus. How do you think the yeah. Southern Heritage Classic will do this year? As far less as with Pine Bluff last, coming in, yep, less less than what they did. Listen, last Jackson year. State was the one brought the crowd. Yep, Jackson State brought the crowd to the Southern Heritage Conference. I mean, the Southern Heritage Classic. And by the way, I don't really, you know what? Tennessee State lost to Lane College. Could they please explain that? No, they can't. can they explain Lane, that Lane they lost to Lane College on year. the campus of Tennessee State? I what think Lane College was actually decent this year. They I were mean, decent. I it doesn't it matter. Too, it's a Division two school. I know. That's about to say it's Division two. I'm pretty sure that Benedict College can beat a couple of SWAT schools. No oh no, that listen, I didn't told you. No no, listen, man, that's, that's a problem. Like listen, that guy Tennis Bear is good. Now y'all, y'all can sit around and pretend y'all don't know about him. No, 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 but but that that's a problem. That is a problem, guys. That is not a problem. That's that's the benefit of the transfer portal. Yes, that's, that's right. That's it. It's not. It's it's listen. listen that's that's their offensive the line the was listen. Benedict College offensive line looked like a swack offensive line. I saw him. That now that's the benefit of uh the the portal. Yeah, yeah. and this guy Chinnis Berry is good. This guy's good. I mean, they played – okay, so for Lane College, they played uh, UAPB. They lost by only six points. Six points. Benedict College, which they were very good this year, they only yeah. – the score was 14-0. and 0, So, Benedict College was only able to score 14 points. So, 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 let me ask you a question. Do you think Benedict College could beat South Carolina State this year? Absolutely. No way. A Absolutely. Yeah. No way. Absolutely. No way. As, as they, as South they, no. In this year. They need nah. to play. They, but listen, they need to play. They do they need, need to play. play. They have a, they play. They, they, they need to play. Years ago. They need they, to play. No way. Because I'm going to tell you no something. Way. That guy, Chennis Berry, I think a lot of y'all sleeping on him. No, I'm not. I love Chennis Berry. Yeah, yeah, that guy's, that guy's good, man. Yeah, He's good. College, Don't get me Barry. wrong. But I just, I just, my, my point is, is that I think. I think the SWAT as a conference has to understand that the MIAC plays a more physical game. They play a more physical game. They do. Yeah. Compared I to give the, them that. To the SWAT. I give like, them that. Like they play, like that's why, that's why I said, nah, nah, nah. Like even in South Carolina State, this is a down year for them. They would beat Benedict. Would it be close? Yes. 
but they will beat Benedict. But in our typical no, year, they'll beat the brakes off of Benedict. Down year, on their down year with the way Benedict College was playing this year, South They would beat Benedict. They would beat Benedict. No. They what we Benedict. need to do is find Tennis Barry a spot in the SWAT. That's, that's what we need to be doing. Because Good luck. You, that's too far. It doesn't make any sense. They was getting. If they're going to join oh, anything, it would be the MIAC. And they been the MIAC. No, I'm saying we need Chinnis Baird. We, we need Chinnis Baird back in the back. Somewhere in the oh, swag. Oh, oh, no. Now, y'all huh? acting like Colorado over there. Leave him where he's <laughs> at. <laughs> leave him where he's at. No, leave, no, no. Nah, nah. Columbia, me, nah, the Columbia me ain't going to allow it. Leave him behind right where he's at. His leave him right there. These are beautiful. Leave him alone. He don't want to. I can't say Can anything about, Can but I can't say it? anything about Lane College because Lane College, I mean, in in a sense, they was pretty much co competitive, and then until Tennessee State, I know they made a couple of mistakes in that game. That's the reason why they lost by yeah. they lost by one. Yeah, all of their games were, with the exception of, um, it looks like with the exception of Benedict College. All of their wins, all of their losses were by a touchdown. Yeah. And that's Lane College. Yes. Yep. That's the school they, that gave you Jacoby Jones, right? Yep. That's ain't Jacoby Jones on, that, that, on that, that, uh, the Alabama Baltimore State. Ravens, right? Wasn't he Baltimore Ravens? Mm hmm. Won mm -hmm. a Super Bowl with them. And he Fred Lane it, played for Lane College, too. Fred Lane. Yeah, that's right. Fred, Fred Lane. Carolina Panthers. Uh, Carolina Panthers. Fred Lane. Yeah, I remember Fred. Yeah. Played with uh, Karoof. What was that yeah, guy's name? Karoof? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so, he played with so that crew. So, Mr. Campbell said uh, Tennessee State lost because they played the third-string quarterback in that game. So, I think Draylon Ellis was hurt in that game. Yeah, I think he was. Uh, so, you uh, right, also, they, Somebody said they uh, TSU had 10 players hurt overall. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't make it okay, guys. I just want you to know that. Yeah, because wait okay. a minute, Division Two is what thirty five scholarships. Yeah, and uh, wait okay. a minute, and Division and one double A or FCS is what sixty five. Yeah, sixty. That's 60, no excuse. 60. No yeah. excuse. That's that no does excuse. not make it okay. That yeah. does not make it okay. <laughs> it does not make it okay, guys. Yeah, yeah. you let, you let a, a Pope Black school in Jackson, him. Tennessee, beat you to death. On yeah, your Dr. campus, Bill said that turnover was a difference in that game. Now the the yeah. attendance for the Southern Heritage Classic for this year, unless uh, UAPB can get the alum from Memphis and from East uh, Arkansas and Southern Arkansas to get to that game, it's going to be a low turnout. It's going to be probably about twenty five thousand up at the at the like yeah. At the way, they, just, listen, just what they should have done. Listen, the, State, the Southern Heritage Classic should have gone after either Alcorn or Southern. That's they who they should have gone after. They went after a t but a t declined. Well, they should have the went after all won. corn. They should have the went after won. all corn or something. Because you won't see Mississippi. I mean, geographically, you can look at Memphis. Memphis is really like a part of Mississippi, even though yep. it's in Tennessee. And so it'll be natural. If Jackson's not going to come, you should have went after all corn. It's about the money, though. Like if the if the if it was the same contract if it was the same contract that Jackson walked out of, walked away from, you can't they you can't blame Alcorn and the company for saying no. You got to think about what the money was, because I they I already pretty much said that Tennessee State called. If they, they would, called, if they would have paid if they would have gave five hundred thousand per school plus two hundred thousand for travel of bands and yeah. Yeah, food and accommodations, right? Mm -hmm. At the Southern Heritage Classic, because that's five hundred thousand in the clear. That's like a money game. Yeah, and you're gonna have all. You're gonna have the, the, culture, the atmosphere. Well, that's all they had to do. But Fred didn't want to do that. Well, Fred ain't got, and Fred ain't got no. Fred got UAPB. Like, yeah, he still want I mean, that. But Fred Jones still want that. Works. Like, Fred, Fred Jones still want that I, money, though. I promise you, one thing, one thing that Earl did, Earl and, and, and Martin did do, they've gotten better contracts, and they they did hit the last AF meeting that Tennessee State did call when the whole contract fiasco was happening with Jackson, and they said we'll look into it to see what the numbers look like, and the numbers are right, we'll consider it. If not, then no. So obviously they weren't. 
<laughs> so that's why I was no. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Randy. How how are those gangs put to like uh together? Now now I'm hearing it's a like uh like a promoter, like an outside promoter yep. or something. Yeah, he's a leech. Yep. Now, it's a leech. now now what's stopping both of the schools from just doing it? Like to this point, them put them put in the work to do it. You and Jackson State, TSU huh? could come to Jackson State, and then yeah. no, it's about oh. having it in a different venue. No, but they, when saying, I was in college, like, TSU did come to Jackson, and Jackson would come to Nashville. Okay, they so, they played it on the campuses back in the day. Uh -huh. oh, okay, and they should bring it back to that, and then all you have yeah, to promote, they, that's right? what they used to do. It's a FedEx, it's a FedEx sponsored classic. Go to UPS. Yeah. Yeah. See, I remember a classic game. Uh, Tennessee State came down to uh, Jackson. They had a guy named Joe 747. And uh, uh, Jackson State had a guy named Perry Harrington. At the time, Jackson State was running the wishbone. This was had to be like In the 70s? maybe yeah, 79, 80. And Perry Harrington broke off a run for about 60 or 70 yards to end the game. It was like a walk-off run. But it was a classic game. There's all kind of pros was in that game. But I remember uh, Perry Harrington, he might have went first or second round to the uh, Eagles. He and Roy Nail Young. And then uh, Joe 747 Adams, he went to the San Francisco 49ers, but they had a golden white boy out there named Joe Montana. And he was <laughs> oh, embarrassed wow. in I've Montana. Heard so, huh? I've heard that guy before. He's pretty good from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. So they sent uh, – <laughs> Joe 747 Adams out of uh, the San Francisco camp and made him go CFL. Yeah. But they should, I wish we could get the tape on that. That was Tennessee State came to Veterans Memorial. So I'm gonna ask this. Perry, go look up this guy, Perry Harrington. I'm going to look at that later. I'm going to ask this question from Nene G. So, yeah, you got one answer. Uh, Tomorrow, put it in the chat that A T that job is still open, and also the job that's still open right now is a uh, Mississippi Valley. So, pretty much every job that every job is almost every job has been filled. A and T will be filled by January fourth, guys. So the only job that's going to be open is the Valley job. What happened to Morehouse? Did they find somebody? Ah, uh, oh yeah, I forgot what you said about Morehouse. I don't know about Morehouse yet. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna definitely want to announce a new head coach for AT at that basketball game. So it'll be so, by January 4th. They're saying by the end of this week, so we'll see. We should so, have some breaking news. So somebody uh, M Shaw was asking if I about uh JSU missing defensive players. So defensive players in the celebration bowl, the defensive players that was missing was uh uh Big Country. Big Country. Gaddy. Catron. Gaddy. Who was that? Catron Evans. Catron yeah. Evans. Catron Evans, yeah. And there was one more. Now, did Catron go to Charlotte? Where did he yeah, go? He got, yeah, he, he got he committed got Charlotte. to Charlotte. Yeah. And everything. He said, peace out. No, oh, he got out of there, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, all right. Well, his, the rest um, of his back, former, right? I think his former, I don't know if it's high school, his football coach is over at Charlotte. That's Charlotte, yeah, because okay. they got a new oh, coach, right? Yeah, and and Michael Plays, I forgot Michael Plays was with, went into the portal. So, uh, well, Michael Plays wasn't necessarily an uh, impact him. player, but Katron no, no, he him. came from Southern Mississippi. Yeah, but he really He's did. actually from uh, Tallahassee. I'm Tallahassee. surprised he didn't go to FAMU. Uh, so you, if you're looking at it, you're looking at it basically as uh, they was missing because they was missing Gaddy was suspended for the game because he was late for what was it tomorrow a team meeting i think the coach was really this was really kind of like an audition for players that were going to colorado okay because i've never seen really? kevin coleman run the ball that much and what? i think he Why took it like that, six though? times like it was more so like an audition like coach prime had in his mind the players that are going to Colorado, that's who I want you to highlight in this celebration bowl. He was holding his son hostage as a quarterback. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, well, we got to let him play. Plus, all of the staff is going there. But this was more so like an audition. And I just saw today that Mata, our kicker, he just 
committed to Colorado. Yeah. So I think that some of these kids that are in the portal, like Kevin Coleman, uh, Shane Hook, they mm-hmm. are going to go to Colorado. Coach Prime is just kind of like, sit tight for a second. I can't just bring all of my Louis luggage all at once. I need to sign y'all in over time. So well, let me say this about Kevin Coleman. Kevin Coleman came in as a highly decorated wide receiver. Now I don't know if he was five star, but he was four star. And one star. thing he he could listen, he don't have to go to Colorado. He, that boy's a star. That boy is a punt returner. He can be a now he he muffed a punt. I can't think against somebody. But he's a punt returner, a kickoff returner. And to me, he's an inside slot. I, like I told him on another show, yep. that last game against uh, South, I mean, against North Carolina Central, he looked like Andre Rison to me. Hmm. That's what he looked like. Yeah, yeah. It, was just, it, was, it was really coaching. Like, we lost the Celebration Bowl due to coaching. Like, if you go Sounds back. Sounds like last year. Like, the, for this year, it was the coaching, not making adjustments. We did yeah. a two-point conversion when we're not even uh, executing two-point conversions against the SWAT teams. And then you go into the Celebration Bowl and somebody's bright idea was let's let's get Shadur another pass and show that he can get a two-point conversion. No, let Mata kick because you know there's a 99.9% chance he's going to make that, that extra point. And when Travis Hunter um, hit through the ball, like, or excuse me, caught that last ball. We would have won 35 to 34. And right. I don't know what they were doing in the fourth quarter, the last two minutes of the game with an injury, a free injury timeout. They kept taking all of the timeouts. You do not need to call that many damn timeouts. I think they called like two or three in the last two to three minutes of the game, but they had a free injury timeout. Mm-hmm. Y'all got a, Y'all got a free. Y'all definitely well, got a free. One. That, okay, well, y'all got a free one for sure. Listen, it shows that Deion Sanders was inexperienced as a head coach. He's a lobby. No, he, he, he wanted Shadur to be the savior. He wanted Travis to be the savior. Like if you really go back and watch it, you'll see. Like Kevin Coleman, he was running the ball. I think he ran it six times. Never ran it that many. I don't think he's even touch the ball that much in any game nah. and then um Shador with the throwing the ball like you know the air raid style everything was was set up to basically show Colorado and the world what the players are that I'm going to take because there's a lot of people that didn't get to play in that game and what? um oh, oh, go oh, sorry go ahead I'm sorry oh I was just going to say like that to me, it just seemed like an audition. And so when Gaddy, Gaddy was real upset and hurt, as he should be, because Gaddy would have made a difference up at that oh, without point. Without a doubt. Yeah, and without just, a doubt. Just switching switching out our – that's one of the biggest things that we've had on every team is we had that. But they're playing the same, the same plays. I think the um, DJ Stevens play – Mm-hmm. And he does to the tight end. It's the same little. It's the same exact play in SWAC. It worked every time. It now I'm gonna say it like this uh, before you go. I'm gonna say it like this. Somebody put it in the chat. Talking about we blaming it on the coaching and disrespect the yeah. team players and other team players and hard work. We're not disrespecting them. No, I'm not they came out. They played a hard game. They played a hard game. They played. They played a hell of a game. When but we down to the last. The, the fourth quarter play where we're that close, they like, couldn't stop them. But the thing is, I would argue that Central could have had this game out of hand early. They made a lot of mistakes in the first half. And that could have the, the, that blew this game out the water. A lot of mistakes in the first half. Go back and watch. So, I mean, I think, I think. Jackson got out coached and they got out played in that game. They got out physical. It was it, it just was a, it was another celebration bowl. It was the same script. Right. All, but, the only difference um, was that the game was just closer score wise. And then and, and then I know what the, we, we know what the chart says, but we need to look when you talk about 
oh, that's what they're supposed to do. We also need to look into historical evidence of Jackson State and what they do on two point conversions, and they're right. not good. But, and on top of them, not but no, but they tend good. to go for it more than more, any other school. Like I know, but they're not. Conference. But they're not good at doing two point conversions. So now you're going against a team that knows they your number and is very them, defensive. No. Just take the extra point. You're not playing against swag play at this point and you, the game is just go ahead and take because at that time it was like four minutes left like just take the extra point i understood why they went for two because yeah. that made it a, that would have made it a three-point lead i believe right right if i remember and, correctly and like that's why they did it thing. it made sense why they went for it when they, they did had it. to switch that mo that uh momentum they, the, they had to do uh, something the chart says two but if you know that Jackson State's not good at two point conversions and we're playing a team that is stopping us and is, then you need to just go ahead and take the but extra. Listen, they didn't, they didn't miss many two point uh, con conversions. Yes, I mean, they did. In slack play, they definitely did. I don't know. I, I got this from Coach Walker right here. He said, you know, we don't – people not talking about the fumble that uh, Travis Hunter did – had or the pass interference that Shallow did that gave the first down to North Carolina Central. But that's going to be – the trick play that it just – I mean, come on now. Do you see it? Yeah. <laughs> but that's a – but we – but, headlights. But thing is, we gonna that's another show. We could that's something that we could talk on another show for another time. But I know I gotta get up in the morning because it's work and I you gotta uh, work, man. You ain't got the week. Come on, man. Days. You gotta check the time dot. Bro, I work, <laughs> man. I, I'm a store manager, <laughs> y'all. So I I I I work. <laughs> so this this is just this work too, but you know, I actually go to Ash's job. He, he work he works works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he work work. But uh, I thank you, Tamona, for coming on to the show and hanging with your boy. I thank you. Thank you uh, for having me, everybody. Go ahead and click the subscription bu button. I will have my podcast coming soon. So thank you for your support. Go ahead and subscribe. Thanks. All right, all right, Dave. Man, we'll. I'm gonna hit you up tomorrow. As as always, we could be on the oh we'll yeah be on the show. HBCU, HBCU nightly gonna be crazy tomorrow. I put my poll up, see see what folks think about the timeline for Mister Mister Ed Reed. Man, we need to put we we need to put uh, HBCU nightly on 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 YouTube. Man, put it on put it on my platform and, and have Josh be the the moderator. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Josh about it because I can probably like I got. I got a Zoom that I can utilize that I have for PNP. Mm -hmm. I can probably leverage. I mean, I use StreamYard for my show as well, so I got yeah. we got options to push come to shove. Um, so we got we got other alternatives. Twitter Spaces makes sense. I wish there was a way, and I'm gonna probably do some research on it. If there was a way to link the two, because I can yeah. do it. Like we can set up StreamYard to, to expand it to everywhere. Like I can put yeah. it in three different places, type of thing. But yeah, you know, I, it'd be nice that, if you utilize Twitter Spaces to keep that. Keep that. Yeah, I, I, I actually, you can actually put it on Twitter, and we can utilize it on Twitter because I use that's why I do my show too. I put it on Twitter. I put it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can do you can do per, you can do Periscope because typically for PNP we do Periscope, Facebook. All right, that, and YouTube, all right, Randy. So. But yeah, we, I mean, we, 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 Twitch, we, can talk, we can talk to Josh about that. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think Twitter spaces work very well because it, it, it keeps 10 people in the discussion, which is good. But no, it's it's the thought, and it lets people go in and out. Zoom will probably work too, but that'll probably be, yeah, to be the moderator for that'll be an adventure. Yeah, but, but yeah, man, all right, but I thank you though, man. I thank you for coming on. Not a question, man. I'm, I'm enjoying right. my week off. This man cage. I thank everybody for uh, joining the show, coming on the show, in the chat room as always. Uh, had a great day today. And by the way, it feels good to hit a thousand subscribers. <laughs> oh, good for you, man! Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. It feels. 
It feels Gosh. good to to hit a thousand subscribers, man. Like y'all just y'all just don't know, man. Well, I was I, I promise you, I was washing my hands in the bath in, in the bathroom here in the house, and I seen my thing hit a thousand. I was on Ken Clark's show. I was like, yes. Just screamed down. My wife looked at me, talking about what what what's going on? What's wrong? Why are you screaming? Why are you screaming? She joined in. She she came in and I showed her my phone and she's like, Yes. I was like, you know what, man? It if that that felt good because man, like, like I said, I started from the phone and ended up doing it on here. I was like, man, this can't get no it can't get no better than this. Let me tell you something, man. I'll never forget, like, when we started PNP, it was just some random, random things. Like, we just was arguing. We just said, let's just log, let's just hop on YouTube to see how it goes. And then it just blew up. And we, and after we had the Steve Smith interview in October, my boy Rashad created a montage that started from the beginning and transitioned to the Steve Smith interview. Like, from when we were doing the show, when he was like in hotels, I was down in my man cave. So when we like were able to afford to buy stuff for the studio, to buy like good cameras, good mics, the whole nine. So we yeah. got to the point where we had while we had players calling us out on our show about us being critical of their play. <laughs> so when Steve Smith finally, get, Steve Smith gave us like the ultimate co-star. You know, and I pretty much told him after Steve Henry, like, bro, we can just cancel the show now. We've we've hit it. We've 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 exceeded our expectations. Right. You know, interviewing the greatest wide receiver in Panthers history was not on the bingo card, but you know, can't complain at all. Yeah. Can't complain one bit. All right, man. I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna let you go though. All, all right, right you later. See you tomorrow. Uh-huh. Thanks, man. All right. And y'all check out Timona, uh, she loves D. Check out her. Uh, go ahead, subscribe to her channel. If you don't uh, subscribe to her channel, we're going to fight. But uh, now, nah. anyway, y'all go subscribe to her channel. Um, she getting all her stuff. She getting all her ducks in a row. She ready for the podcast thing. I think she's going to do good as being a podcaster uh, with her own show and with the content that she could put out. I'm, I'm like, it's going to be... It's it's it it's gonna be live. Trust me. I, I I and and we always, you know, when you're podcasting, man, like you, we always are in school. This school is in session every time you do this. So, um, but I I like you know what I'm saying. I like coming on to the show because she comes with facts. She comes with information. She was ready. She was ready with it, y'all. She was ready with it. I, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna hold y'all. She was, she was ready at on point and held her own. That's something that we need to. Uh, that's something that we need to have as far as with women, especially women doing sports as a podcast. That like we need to to uplift them and 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 support them and motivate them because hey. You just don't know. She, you know, what I'm saying. Thank she, you so much. You welcome. You, she gonna hit. Um, I promise you, she gonna hit a thousand subscribers before she pull out the first show. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yeah, man, y'all, look. Uh, congratulations to Ed Reed for being named the head coach at Bethune Cookman. I know you're gonna get that program rolling. I know you're gonna get get that program, um, from the dumps. Uh, hopefully you'll get the backing of the uh, hopefully you'll get the backing of the uh alumni and the student body and and pretty much the 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 uh administration. You you you'll get there, my guy, and welcome to the swag. So it don't matter if you ain't from the swag, you are swag because you are a swag head coach, man. So. Congratulations to you uh, getting the job. I know you've been wanting to get a head coaching job for a long time, for a minute, and now you got it. All right. Uh, other than that, looking at scores from looking at it on my phone, uh, shout out to my Dallas Mavericks. 
taking the Knicks uh, in overtime, 126 to 121. And Luca with the ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous triple double, 60 point triple double, 60 points. 21 rebounds and 10 assists. Can I can I repeat that for y'all? Luka Doncic had 60 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists. That's a bad white boy, y'all. I don't care. He played for my hometown team, so it's all good with me. <laughs> but um, but yeah. But y'all look, make sure y'all go subscribe to She Loves D on YouTube. Uh, if you uh also you can probably catch her on Twitter. Uh she come out with some dope edits, y'all. That's something that I I I I paid attention to. She can't she comes out with some dope edits about kids from Jack State that are actually staying in the school, kids that got signed. Like y'all gotta check that out. Check it out on her YouTube or on her Twitter page. Is, is is banging but still uh this your boy doc holiday and this is hbcu overdrive with doc holiday where hbcus matter make sure that you like this stream like it uh and comment comment i'm always reading comments and share with your people most of all subscribe we already hit a thousand we still gonna keep going so this I'm going to be like Aubrey Miller. This shit don't stop. So uh, in that case right there, um, I'm going to leave y'all with this good old music, this outro music right here. And until then, I'll probably be back on Thursday night. We'll talk about uh, we'll talk about more more recruiting in the SWAC and the MEAC. And also we'll talk about – I, I want to get into the subject about – how we come up with better decisions for classic games, y'all. Better decisions for classic games. So if I can, if, if Tamona's up to it, I'll let see she come back on the show and we can spit, you know what I'm saying, we can spit game about these classic games and we can go back into the recruiting and stuff like that. But until then, uh, as always, in the meantime, between time, y'all stay blessed. Be easy, be safe, and stay dangerous. Peace.